Hey what's up guys, welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto master seal control at early age. This is movie, and this is gonna interesting video I love this fanfic you can check it out this fanfic author name in a description, and if you want more of this series you can comment down and like and subscribe also share with your friends. Let's get in the video. It was a terrifying October night, as the dark clouds of the sky glowed red from the demonic power of the demon attacking the village. As the screams of pain could be heard by an auburn-haired woman gasped at the final push delivering her child. Give him to me, please. She whispered out as she could feel her soul slipping from her, the presence of the demon forcing her now weakened body to fail her. Looking at the small child that she was handed the ghost of smile graced her lips, I wish I could be here for you my baby, but Kami seems to have other plans. She coughed splattering blood on the freshly cleaned child. The attending nurse fled the room to find a doctor, leaving the mother and son alone. Kishina quickly used her fingers and the fresh blood to draw many symbols across the boy's face before she summoned her remaining chakrafuge in jutsu. Uzumaki training seal. Battle of the swirling tides the blood-drawn seal flashed a deep blue before is merged above the child's brow and seeped below the surface of the skin, leaving no trace of its presence. I don't know what cough this will do since you are so young, but cough, I will always love you, cough, the monitors in the room started screaming as her heart stopped beating and the color left her face. Then a flash of yellow and there stood the fourth Hokage himself, looking between his wife as she passed on and his son. I'm sorry, I will see you soon Kashina, forgive me Naruto. With a heavy heart and eyes of determination like steel, he began drawing seals along the infant's stomach, unaware that there was anything else placed on the boy. The shouts of Jutsu and the mangled screams of the dying filled the air as a tall blonde stood holding a small bundle atop a giant toad. Are you sure Minato? The toads croaked. It's the only way Gamabunta. I just hope the old man and the village can understand. The blonde whispered. With that the toad leaped into the air coming to land near the giant Kitsune demon. Forgive me Naruto, but you are their only hope. I wish I could be with my son I love you. The man's blue eyes flashed with emotions as he prayed to Kami. Shikafujin. Celestial Death God Seal, he screamed out as he thrust the small bundle up in the air, making the blanket fall away, showing a small baby, still wrinkled and tinged red from birth, covered in intricate patterns of several seals drawn across his body. Everything went silent, and all motion seemed to slow to nothing more than a snail's crawl, as Minato felt a chill pierce his heart and the ghostly hands reaching from him through the baby and grasping the giant demon the Kayubi no Kitsune. Then a bright flash of light and he found himself standing in a dark space that seemed like a void of nothingness, before him was a gate with a small slip of paper holding the bars shut. The only other figure was the great demon standing on the other side with a look of confusion upon its muzzle. Where am I mortal? The demon spoke with a low rumble, the confusion evident as it laced his deep voice. I don't know. Minato spoke, as he too was perplexed by the situation. This wasn't supposed to happen, what went wrong? Was it all for nothing? A chilling chuckle echoed off the walls of the sower as he turned to face the sound and the Kayubi narrowed its eyes to small slits. A boy came to face the Shinigami. I shall answer both of you. QB Sama you are inside a seal placed upon an infant. I am sure you know what this would mean. The spirit spoke as he looked upon the Kitsune with what seemed to be pity in his eyes. The same to you as well Minato, Kami indeed heard your prayer, though it is not to be so I am going to. Allow each of you a request though I will not have to grant it. He held up two withered fingers. But first I must explain the rules, as we are bound by the laws of this world. The death god paused as he looked between both of the beings that were before him. The bounds of this seal will still hold, so both of you shall forfeit your souls to me. Kayubi's chakra will remain here all of it. As the seal is already pulling it into the boy to merge with him though that is not caused by your seal, as he pointed his hand to the demon's tails being pushed into the walls, all but one were connected. QB you should now remember what caused you to attack this village, and as such your request must focus on a way to balance that action of yours. As for you Minato your request must pertain to the boy that you have placed this curse upon. As I will alter this mental landscape to offer the boy a peace of mind from what it would turn into from both of your actions. But that said the death god vanished from sight as did the cage and the walls of the seal's prison, leaving Minato and Kayubi alone in a void of space to contemplate their decisions. Minato was a genius of a shinobi, and questions had started to circle his thoughts as to what he could ask for his son. But for some reason the nagging spaces of why the demon had attacked might be important. Ayubi, I need to know why you attacked us. It might affect my request. He had asked bravely as he knew for some reason he wouldn't be harmed here. The large kitsune looked at the mortal with appraising eyes before it spoke. Two reasons, though one was to erase the mistake I made in creating the Achiha's eyes. Madara was more cunning than I gave him credit for the other was your Sananarachimaru. The great demon's eyes showed tears of sadness as they dripped into the nothingness that surrounded them. You created the Sharingan. He scoffed at the concept, but the arrogance of that clan seemed to fit. 
Yes, all bloodlines stem from a higher source, the Hyuga were from the Nibi, any of the physical bloodlines are steamed from us be you or other lesser demons, though your chakra ones stem from other spirits. The demon replied, as it shifted trying to find a more comfortable position. Alright. So how does the Hibi Sanin feature into this as he has been declared a missing nin for several years now? Bonato could at least wrap his mind around wanting to erase the Ichiha, but to attack the village in such a rage. The bastard used one of his jutsu on me, it failed, but I was enraged between that and seeing a Sharingan Bane used against me, with him there I snapped. I knew they were both from this village. I'm sorry. The great Biju answered sincerely. They may be demons yet in Kami's plans they served a purpose greater than destruction. They were to preserve a balance ever since the destruction of the last era. I see. I think I know now what I will ask for, have you decided? Minato needed this last piece of information to truly make his plan, he only had one shot at this. He chuckled morosely as that seemed to be his mantra as of late. Yes, I will give him a way to defeat the Sharingan at every turn. As there is no doubt that this boy will not become a ninja he will need it. I will also not make the same mistake I did when I gave them their eyes. Humans are too greedy. No matter their intentions. He held up a paw to stop the retort as he finished speaking the world phased back placing them in a field of flowers with two swirling pools of water. One a deep blue the other a sea green, with the Kyubi's eight tails dipped into them. The death god, appearing before them as he swung his scythe into both pools, dragging a line from each to merge in one flowing river. This boy is more interesting than I first thought, it's no wonder why she has allowed this. My time altering this scape has allowed me to know everything he has the potential for. It seems destiny and gifts have been placed in this one's hands. The god chuckled at the irony of what he will be telling the mortal. Bonato snapped from his gazing at the landscape that was his son's mind, what do you mean? It means we have discovered, well I have traced the boy's soul and blood, who his ancestry is. It seems Namakas, you are descended from one of the three sons of the great sage. One was given the chakra, one was given the eyes, the last was given his insight. The death god laughed upon seeing their faces, but more so the mortals. It was true the boy could be powerful, but it would require training and work. All he had done was unearth the potential tools at this boy's disposal, as he didn't wish to see his work and the will of the kami to be wasted so shortly afterwards by the stupidity of what will occur in this boy's life. Also, as he will still be a vessel since the seal is in effect. He will have the regeneration granted to all vessels, which is why there is one tail still free. So, now Kayubi give me your request. The god looked at the demon sitting between the great pools of water. The demon nodded and bowed before giving his request. As I will be unable to correct my mistakes with the Sharingan and the Achiha, I wish to give a tool that will neutralize it. I grant him the Kageganer shadow eyes. They will work similar to the Sharingan, except they will not be able to copy Jutsu, instead it allow him to see Chakra. As for the higher levels they are altered by each wielder, so that will be the power I give to my vessel. The demon spoke before a orb of darkness pulled out of its chest spinning rapidly and broke into two spheres. Each now looking as the boy's eyes, bright blue then changed into all black eyes with at first a single blue swirl then another and another, much like the coma of the Sharingan. Then they sunk into the landscape becoming one with the boy. The terms of unlocking them will stay the same, but the other level shall be when he reaches key stages in his growth. With that the demon seemed to vanish leaving behind a large red ocean that fed into the lakes. The seal appearing over the red waters started to regulate the power into the smaller blue pools. Bonato didn't know what to ask for now, as he looked at what had happened and learned that he was related to the father of all jutsu. He didn't know how but he felt in his heart. Though now what could he give his son as he doubted power was any more needed with near infinite reserves. He smacked himself in the forehead, if his son was anything like him he would need that dot um. He well I don't know exactly how to word this, so it will be a lot of small interconnected things, so here goes. He laughed scratching the back of his head. I don't want to cheat and give him knowledge, but I want him to be smart and perceptive, easy to learn things and even grasp concepts outside of what he actually knows. That way he doesn't end up being a dead last like me and I'm not being able to be aware of people's feelings towards him. Haha. <laughs> the death god looked at Minato, perceptive fast learner, oh yes that could be fun. Very well Minato I will alter his mind a touch more to give him an eidetic memory and a greater precision. The god molded a power in his hands and constructed a replica of the Hokage tower between the two pools. A bastion for the boy's knowledge and a tower to look from, the rest would be up to the boy to create or destroy as he saw fit, though he would be checking in on this one, as it would be interesting to see how this boy would change the world. Battlefield, the flash of light from the Indame ceiling exploded across the land knocking everyone down, as the great demon was seen sucked into the child being held up. They all watched as the hands of the death god pulled it all into the boy and then removed itself pulling their hero soul with them. There was a brief moment of other souls being pulled into the air with the lingering presence of the god vanished. 
Jiraiya landed next to the fallen Hokage and looked quickly to the glowing seal on the small boy, seeing the faint hint of whisker marks fading from the boy's face. He studied the seal and began checking it for and weaknesses, since he knew that the something happened because the key he had been given had exploded when the sealing finished. But upon searching the seal nothing was wrong, and the boy was holding all of the demon's chakra, we need to get you to sensei. With that he grabbed the boy and took off running to the Hokage Tower, leaving the rest up to everyone else. Tower, jumping through the window, he landed in the office of the Hokage, seeing his sensei at the desk and the backs of the council, leaving he waited for the doors to close. Jiraiya kun is that him? Yes, he looks just like Minato. The seal is holding fine, but I don't think it worked like he planned, I just don't know what went wrong. I'm going away with him being a vessel now I need to start looking into them so I can protect him. The man said as he looked at the boy, before leaving quickly the unshed tears in his eyes seen by no one but the once again Hokage. I'm sorry Naruto, but you will have to go to the orphanage. I just hope in time you can forgive an old man for what he is doing to keep you alive. With a heavy heart and a sigh, he started creating the boy's medical records leaving him named as Name? Naruto Uzumaki The OB October 10 Sex Male Eyes Blue Hair Blonde, living family. None. Clan or bloodlines. Unknown. Special status. Jinkyurichi of the Kayubi no Kitsune SS class secret. But the last stroke on the records, he sighed as he sealed the true records of the boy's heritage, knowing on that his parents were Minato and Kishina, nothing else, into the Hokage vault, he wrote out to more laws before the council, and especially Danzo got wind of this boy. The first making it punishable by death to speak of what the boy was, though it would be known by anyone down in rank or above. The second one would be a failsafe, though he hated to do so, but it would keep him out of anyone's hands should anyone who knows about his tenant attempt to adopt or coerce into their family or clan or government military capacity, he would be immediately be emancipated. Just as his stamp slammed into both laws, the doors burst open as Danzo and several of the council came storming and I demand the boy be turned over to Rue to be trained as the weapon he is. The demon should be leashed, and there is no better program than mine for such a thing. The Hokage is smirked, this time he finally got him and there was nothing Danzo could do. Anbu, restrain and execute Danzo for breaching my laws. He turned to look at the outraged splutter of the man. You see you breached not only SS class village secret, you just violated my mandated law against speaking about his unique situation. You also enacted the accompanying law of trying to force him into your program, therefore granting him emancipated status. He watched as his own Anbu subdued the Danzo, rendering him unconscious. Kill him and hide his body on the battlefield. The Anbu and Danzo flickered out of his office. Now to summon the council and the Jounin. Five years later, the unnatural mess of blonde hair seemed to whip in the wind as a small boy ran through the streets of town, I didn't do nothing, why do they always beat me? His thoughts cried out as he heard the sound of fire coming after him. He tripped on the raised stones of the road as the fireball flew over him burning his filthy and tattered orange jumpsuit. The cuts and bruises stuck between healing and more being formed. The sting of metal cutting into his skin caused him to scream as he felt more fire burning him and those ninja knives cutting his skin. Please I sorry, I didn't do a nighting. The boy cried amidst the shouts of die demon, you killed my mother, you killed our yandame. And various other words that he didn't know yet what they meant. The sound of birds seemed to fill the air and his lat thoughts were I just want to be safe. Naruto found himself waking up next to a lake his clothes ruined and he could taste blood in his mouth but he felt fine. Looking around he didn't know where he was. Hello? He looked around but didn't see anybody, but he saw himself in the water, and there was this funny writing on his belly and on his face. The mark on his face flashed blue, and then he heard a voice, Naruto is that really you? He spun around to see a really pretty lady with bright red hair and wearing a white dress. H hi, but who are you? He was trying to think about where to run to, but something told him she was not going to hurt him, she wasn't standing like the others, she was like Oji-chan and the Ichikaris. She laughed sadly, well, I was your mother before I died. I'm sorry I died. She shed a single tear as she spoke. You're my mom? Does this mean I died too? That means the villagers finally killed me. So that means they can be happy now right since I'm a demon and they killed the bad guy. He was crying, but as long as the people were happy now that wasn't a bad thing since he got to be with his mommy. No, you aren't dead, you aren't a demon, and they are all stupid for treating a child like they did. If I were alive I would burn them all to the ground for what they did to you. She vowed as she ran to him and pulled him into a crushing hug. It's okay baby, for now mommy is right here, but I can't stay long, but just know that I love you, and once you learn to come here on your own, there are books and scrolls in that tower that will help you become a great ninja okay baby. The blonde boy looked up at here and saw the tower that looked like the Hokage's tower. Where is here then? She laughed and it sounded like I'm silly we are inside your mind, you just need to learn to meditate. And how to use your chakra. 
When you wake up you need to tell the old man that your mother said that if you don't teach my son I will come back from the grave and haunt your itcha itcha books, and then I want you to focus on your forehead and make that mark show up for him okay. Naruto nodded though he had no idea what itcha itcha was and why that would make Oji Chan teach him to be a ninja. Okay, do do you think I could be Hokage one day? He asked timidly, because everyone always mad fun of him or beat him because of it. You can be whatever you want, as long as you work hard and do it to protect someone special. She smiled, as both of them seemed to fade away. Naruto could hear beeping noises, and he smelled that icky smell. He was in the hospital again, opening up his blue eyes he looked around scared, until he saw the old man and the one nice lady from the hospital that helped him. Oji-chan. Nira-chan. He croaked out, and both of the adults spun to look at the boy, both having tears in their eyes. Naruto-kun, I'm sorry I couldn't have protected you better. The old Hokage said, I've failed you Minato. Kishina. I'm sorry. Nira was scanning him checking for injuries and finding nothing underneath his bandages, everything is healed, Hokage-sama. Everything. She sounded amazed as she looked at the Hokage who had a sad smile on his face. Oji. I'm supposed to tell you my mother said that if you don't teach me how to protect myself, that she would come back from the grave and haunt your itch. Itcha itcha books. He looked very serious as he squinted his eyes like he was trying to concentrate, which he was. Come on you stupid Mark Lowe to prove the old man that I'm not making this up. Do it. He felt something rush under his skin before he felt his forehead start to tingle. The Hokage was concerned with what Naruto had told him, considering that was always what Kishina had threatened him with if she was ever sent out on a mission that might kill her or Minato. But all doubt vanished from his mind when he saw the blue pulse of a seal on Naruto's forehead, and he recognized the seal as the one that Kishina had placed on Minato the whole three months before they had entered their exams. The fact that Naruto seemed to have it and the only way it could have been placed was by his mother, that meant that he had that seal before the demon was sealed in him. Nira use your Byakugan and scan his chakra pathways, she nodded, and the veins near her eyes bulged as she looked at Naruto and gasped, Hokage-sama you're not going to believe this. He has sets of pathways. But they are connected still not separate. It's like his chakra and its chakra are in blandness with each other, but, but. Judging by this he's been using chakra for everything, from moving to even breathing. The Hokage chuckled, I always wondered how they managed to pull that off. He looked between Naruto and Nira. It seems before your mother passed away she placed a clan seal on you, so that you would have the secret training that made the Uzumakis a feared clan. Though it was from what she told me only to be used for the last year of the academy because of the physical strain on the body. He smiled knowing what this could mean, but at the same time what others would see it as. Now, we have a small problem Naruto, everyone thinks you are dead. Naruto interrupted him, that's good they can all be happy now that they avenged everyone that was killed. Saratobi was stunned for a moment at the inside of the boy, yes that would work, and then they could give Naruto a new identity, and there was a kinjutsu in the scroll that would reshape his appearance permanently. That's very wise my boy, so that means that we can change how you look and give you a new name, Nira go and collect some blood samples from the unknown files 3 male and 3 female. She nodded and disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Looking back to the boy, he snapped his fingers summoning an anbu, he beget my the forbidden scroll, the anbu bowed and vanished again. So my boy, do you know what you would like to be called now? Or do you want to wait to see what you look like first? Naruto scrunched up his nose and thought, Ryu, but I know this sounds weird, but can I be an amicus? I mean we don't know anything about where the clan came from. And we could find me outside the city. Naruto didn't know why he wanted the last name aside from it being his idol of all time, but it felt right. The Hokage seemed amused with his request, and it was true Minato wasn't born here in the village, nor even in the land of fire, so it wouldn't be that far of a stretch. Very well Ryu-kun he said with a smile as both the Anbu and Nira came back with the requested items. Thank you Hibi you may return outside. He waited till the Anbu left. Before he flashed through several seals and a purple barrier sprung up around the room. Nira, you will be receiving a mission to a village several days from here to help with training their medical staff, there you will find a boy named Namika's Ryu, I want him back in the village, since he may be in trouble if anyone from Iwa hears of his name. She seemed confused, but the Hokage just smiled at her, as he unrolled the rather large scroll looking for the jutsu he wanted. Finding it he began drawing seals on Naruto in the blood that was brought to him, and in the center of each of the six seals he cut Naruto, letting his own blood mix on the seals. Forbidden Fujin Jutsu. Forced adoption of the deceased he flashed through what seemed like hundreds of seals, before he placed his hands on each of the six seals. Naruto tensed up as he felt his entire body come alive and start pulling and shifting, he opened his mouth in a silent scream of pain before a wash of light covered him. Now normally this would jutsu would force the child to become part of the clan and inherit a weak version of their bloodline if they had one, but Naruto was anything but normal. 
as the jutsu was progressing the Kyuubi's chakra seemed to lash out and grab hold of the ritual seeking out in powers and found a few specks to pull into its host and strengthen. Though most of the donors weren't ninja they still had the potential, four of the six had affinities to the elements which the chakra embedded into the boy, giving him a balance with all five of them. The other two were nothing like that, yet one held a trace of another spirit, one that had the QB truly remained behind, would have caused laughter of truly frightening proportions. What little sentience was within the demon's chakra, was pleased with the offerings to its host. Soon they wouldn't be separate anymore, but one but for now the instinct of survival was its main purpose, as the winged shadow of a large beast flew over the mindscape. Outside, they watched as red and blue chakra surge from the boy and pulsed around him, watching him grow a little taller, filling out more to a very healthy level, his hair changing between blonde, red and silver, as his gained a little more muscle, and seemed to become more limber. Eventually the jutsu finished leaving behind a young boy who was about 4 feet tall, tall for a 5 year old, with deep golden strawberry blonde and a darker tan more of a worker than the previous golden color. The boy's eyes fluttered open still that deep blue. Oji never do that again. He groaned out but flashed his fox-like smile, sure thing Ryu-kun. Now you need to get to that village so Nira can bring you back don't you think? They all laughed a little bit. The sun was burning brightly over the smaller village, Ichinawa was one of the four villages aside from Kanoha that held a hospital or clinic of any sort. Which is where we now find Ryu, Naruto, and his savior and sensei now. The room was white and smelled of cleaning supplies as Nira looked at the several young men and women who staffed the hospital. Now, the Hokage has sent me here to help organize and supplement some additional training to you. All of you have had some form of chakra training in order to utilize Hiram Jutsu or Medical Jutsu. As well I am going to have Ryu pass out to each of you a copy of the Herbalism Training Guides to help expand your knowledge of medicine. She looked to the younger boy and nodded as he hopped down and passed out the stack of green books, having one left for himself. He was happy the Nira-chan was with him the whole way here and would be with him the next couple of months, she had really helped him out on their way here. Flashback, they had just made camp after leaving Kanoha, Nira-chan. Since I am supposed to be Ryu now, do you think you could teach me ninja stuff until we get back? Since I'm going to be coining the academy late. He asked her as he helped collect water for their meal. The woman looked over to him as she thought about it, she didn't know anything outside of Iryo Jutsu and the Hyuga clan Jutsu, but maybe it would be a good idea just so he could have the basics, after all he is supposed to have been a survivor or a clan massacre on the outskirts of Iowa. It's a good idea, I will teach you something every night we rest. Tonight, I will show you how to access your chakra and the 12 hand signs. But no jutsus until you can perform all the hand signs in any order that I give you without pausing or thinking about it. He just smiled and quickly came over and sat down. She ruffled his hair and sat with him. Alright, this is going to be different than what they tell you at the academy when you start, since this is how I was trained by my clan, you have to promise to never tell anyone how you learned this alright. He just nodded, hi Niranichan. She began explaining in detail the chakra system and about the tenketsu and how everything flowed through his body and that chakra could be pushed from any of those points. Going into how chakra was an energy that was created from their physical and spiritual energies. Teaching how to feel the flow inside himself and how to tap into it. Nir watched as he seemed to absorb everything she had said like a sponge. Now, I am going to activate my eyes and watch you as you try and connect with your chakra. I'll tell you when you have done it. She pushed her chakra into her eyes and watched his pathways seeing that the two sets she had seen earlier had merged, leaving the blue and red chakra to swirl calmly through the boy. Ryu took a deep breath and felt for the energy slowly as he was told. He felt the tingle like last time when he tried to show his seal, this must be it. It was calm and gentle nothing like he was told the first time would be. Since he didn't have control it should have been stronger and forceful. Good Ryu, what does your chakra feel like to you? He sat there for a moment calm like a pond, but it feels like it's huge. She smiled, even though she wondered how it was so calm, but then she remembered the seal on him that forced him to use chakra. It if the Hokage was right was a control seal to teach control to academy students in the Yuzumaki clan. But having it on for five years seemed to have given him near perfect control and only increased his reserves beyond anything. Good, that's much better than we could hope for. It just means that you will learn and be able to perform jutsu much quicker, though you always need to make sure to use exactly the right amount of chakra for everything. Now if you feel along your chakra you will find places that feel slightly larger. Those are your tenketsu. I want you to focus on pushing chakra out of each one. One at a time when you find them. Sending chakra to different parts of your body. If you mess up or miss one you have to start all over again. She was going to be hard on him, but it was the Hyuga method of chakra control and training. Days later three days from Michinawa, Nira sensei, how come my eyes tingle whenever I put chakra in them? Ryu asked. It had been bothering him since he started learning to mold the chakra to his body. 
she stopped walking and looked at him. Keep your eyes open and push chakra into them slowly until you feel the tingle stop or I tell you alright. This sounds like a dejutsu, but none of the samples had them or any bloodlines, we tested them all. She watched as the sea blue eyes darkened and became solid black with a single blue swirl in them. Covering her mouth as she gasped do. Do you see anything now? Nah. Ryu. Almost forgetting his new name and her surprise. Yay. I can see really clearly and I can see your chakra this is so cool. Turning on her eyes, she noticed that his chakra pathways seemed clouded and distorted. Now stop the chakra to your eyes slowly. She watched as the flow stopped and his tenketsu reappeared. I'll have to test him when we get to the village and send the results back to the Hokage. Alright, now I don't want you to use your eyes like that until I can teach you more, since it seems you share a trait with the Hayuga. I will teach you the Jukin, which needs you to use your eyes, but you will have to find another style of Tejutsu to incorporate with it. So we don't get into trouble. And flashback, the several weeks here, and the training they did outside of the hospital, had progressed evenly. He had picked up his control to perfection, hand seals were flawless for his age, and really anything he seemed to read or study long enough became permanent knowledge. She was truly thankful to Kami that the boy was so compassionate and peaceful. Even the few jutsu that she had taught him, all of which were medical, had come without a hitch after the second or third try. It was the test she ran once they had gotten here that were astounding. His IQ was nearly 200, between the QB's healing factor and his new jujutsu that they called the Kagigan, because if is his pathways when it was active, he would be a highly desired young man for any of the clans, when they returned arrived for the first time in Kanoha. Ryu once you're finished reading I want you to work on your katas and tree walking with five senbon. He just nodded, as he flipped page to page soaking in the knowledge the book offered. It was so much fun, learning. No one had ever let him learn. He wasn't allowed in school because everyone had hated him, but now he worked two hours a day writing, two hours doing push-up, sit-ups and several other exercises. Then two hours on chakra control, two hours on tajutsu, and then he either studied books or played with the other kids. The days turned into weeks and the weeks to months, before long the six months that Ryu and Nira had spent in the village had come to an end and they were traveling back to Kanoha. The young six-year-old could be seen wearing a nearly identical outfit to Nira. The dark blue Anbu-style pants with closed-toe shoes. A sleeveless blue mesh armor shirt over a long-sleeved black shirt and a black jacket with several pockets with the tri blue swirls on the back. Along with a bag with several books and scrolls in it. These were from the Hokage, as he sent them a few weeks before they left. They were falsified records of the Namaka's clan, including the Dejutsu, along with some clan Jutsu and Dejutsu scrolls. It was all Ryu could save as he fled Iwa with his mother who died from injuries. The last six months he had read all he could on Iwa and their history so that he could pull of his ruse. But the most interesting thing was the shinobi guide that he had received, listing all the rules of being a shinobi. The most interesting one to him was the rule of deception. Nira and the Hokage were the only ones who knew the truth and would stay that way. To anyone else he was just a little above average in everything that he was taught. They were also told about the massacre of the Achiha, and that perhaps with Ryu having a similar history could perhaps befriend and help the boy Sasuke once they arrived. The gates of Kanoha, Alt, please show us your papers. The two guards prompted, Nir of course pulled her own and looked sadly down at Ryu. He doesn't have any papers, I wanted to bring him to the Hokage. To see if he could join our village as his clan was destroyed by Iwa. The two guards stiffened at the mention of another massacre and then name Iwa. They both looked at the younger boy, what's your name? The boy smiled sadly as if he remembered the destruction. Namak is Ryu, I want to be a ninja so that I can stop people from hurting those who can't defend themselves. The guard froze at the name, before looking to Nira now you can see why I brought him. The guards looked to each other before they unsealed the gate to let them enter. Just report straight the Hokage. They all nodded to each other, but Ryu and Nira could hear the whispers as the gate closed Namakas. Iwa poor kid you wonder if that's why they hated us so much. Reaching the Hokage's office the both walked in once the secretary allowed it. Inside they found Siratobi and his two advisors. So this is the survivor here isn't. The older woman spoke. It appears so, and the blood samples that Hayuga sent sent back to us confirms a relation to the Namakas of our village, though a few steps removed, as well as some ties to the Yuzumaki and several other civilian clans of Iowa. The boy looked between all three of the elders, forgive me Hokage-sama, I am Namakas Ryu, the heir to the Namakas clan. Also. The only survivor. That I know of. He sniffled a little, before he continued. I wish to restart my clan here, since I found out that your last Hokage was a Namakas I would be honored if you would allow me to. Ryu spoke slowly as if he had practiced his manners for this moment. The three elders looked to each other, two of which only saw having the name Namakas again in the village, and if he could access the estate as a true Namakas, then they would lose control over the funds and have to return what was spent. 
The Hokage however smiled, seeing as you are an amicus, and we have held your clan here before I as Hokage welcome you as a returning clan to our village. Hokage-sama. Before my mother and I escaped we rescued as much of our clan records and scrolls as we could. Unfortunately none of our Dejutsu scrolls survived. The three in the know hid their smirks as they saw the double take from the two advisors. Forgive us namikas sama but did we hear you say that you pass as a Dejutsu? The salviating look in the two elders' eyes was obvious. Hi, it is the Kagigan. Did the Namika's clan here not express this? He asked as he activated his eyes, showing them what it looked like before deactivating. However its function and use is a clan secret. After a few more questions and several glances at the documents that he would show them they eventually agreed to allow him to become a clan and left. Leaving the Hokage, Nira, and Ryu there alone. Ryu-kun, if I didn't know any better I would have believed all of it. They all laughed for a moment, now here are the accounts and keys to your estate, as well as the scrolls left in my possession by the late Hokage. Until you are 16 however you need someone to act as your counsel and perform the duties required as a clan head. Ryu nodded and thought for a moment, from what I have read, I would like to request either Aburam-sama or Nara-sama, as they seem to be the most trustworthy and honest clans. Some were two men sneeze one simply raising a brow and the other muttering troublesome. I see, that can be arranged. Off now, as I have been informed, insert old man I twinkle, you have been instructed in some of the shinobi arts am I correct? Ryu nodded slightly, hi according to Nira Nisan my control is perfect, my reserves are well you should figure that out easily. With a combination of two tojutsu styles my clan style is the hachitakan. Which caused the hokage to raise a brown. Explain please. Ryu flashed a fox-like grin, it's easy, my Kagigan has the chakra seeing ability like the Byakugan, but not the rest, so Nira-chan taught me the Jukan, and after I got the hummingbird style scroll I merged the two as for Jutsu, I know the basics, and well, Nichin says, I am a Chunin level medic, he blushed proudly, as Nira must up his strawberry blonde locks. Very good Ryu, I will enroll you at the academy, you start tomorrow at 10, also I will be offering you two long-term missions that will end once you become a genin. One I would like for you to place yourself at the bottom of the class so that you may be teamed up with the Achiha, and the second is I would like you to assist the hospital under Nira San's supervision. Ryu smiled, seeing this as a chance to learn more and to spend more time with his Nichin. Hi, not let anyone know about it either. The Hokage chuckled at this, the first mission no, but seeing as Nira San has taken you on as her apprentice, it will be fine on the second one. Just no bragging. The boy nodded, alright, then I guess I should go check out my house and look at everything, plus get food, clothes, and my books and stuff for classes. Seeing as I only know Iwa knowledge. Oh could I get some books on ceiling? He looked at the Hokage with the infamous puppy eyes no jutsu the old man crumbled, of course Ryu kun if you come here every Tuesday I will instruct you in ceiling. Ryu did a fist pump in the air, yosh. Erm. Sorry, Oji san. As he rubbed the back of his head and flashed his grin. That's quite alright, but I am sure you have plenty to do until tomorrow, so get to it. The boy and Nira bowed and left. After their meeting with the Hokage, Ryu and Nira had to split ways as she needed to return and report her mission to her clan head, Hiyashi. Leaving Ryu alone to get acquainted with his new village. Not much had changed in the few months since his death as Naruto, yet the village seemed different almost to quiet especially for a ninja village. A young boy stopped in several of the bookstores and picked up his books and scrolls for the academy being ever so polite and courteous. He also picked up several books on chakra theory and sealing methods. Before long he found himself entering the Wolf Claw, a supply store designed specifically for ninja, and if several ninja and the owner proclaimed it the best who was he to argue. The bell on the door chimed revealing a gruff looking man behind the counter, polishing the finished sword he had just forged, welcome to the Wolf Claw, name's Hiyashigi Tanashi what can I get ya? The jovial voice didn't seem to match up with the hardened appearance in Ryu's thoughts, but then not much with a ninja could match up with anything normal. Hi, I just recently moved here and am going to be starting the academy tomorrow, so I need the basic academy kit, and I was also curious if you had some scrolls on tojutsu and kinjutsu styles. He flossed a warm smile to the older man. I really think having a weapon might be a very useful skill that I wouldn't have to keep buying new ones of from throwing them away. The Ishigi just smiled, new kid, and already thinking about a weapon. Tenton might make a new friend out of him. Sure thing kid, but lem ask you some questions to see if I can figure out what would be the best type for you. Ryu just smiled giving a quick nod of his head. Alright, well first things you got a clan and what's your fighting style? He didn't want to be too nosy, but when it came to weapons and clans it seemed only certain things meshed. Hi, I'm from the Namixi clan, and my current Tejutsu style is a combination of the hummingbird and what seems to be the Jukin of the Hayuga. The sound of S sword clattered to the ground, did you say Namikas and Jukin? The old man's eyes were wide in either fright or adoration Ryu couldn't tell which. 
Hi, I'm the survivor and heir to the clan before its destruction in Iowa. As for the Jukin I would assume it's from our ability to see chakra as the high Uga do though our eyes are different in most other ways. The Nashi closed his mouth and pulled out a scroll and started writing things down after he asked Ryu more questions. Things along the lines of defense or offense. Submission or killing. Animals that the boy liked and so on. Not all of them made sense to Ryu, but to any true weaponsmith or master every weapon style was a unique soul that had to match to the user. After what seemed like forever to a six-year-old boy, though in reality it was nearly only an hour Tanashi finished his questions and looked over his list that he had made. I see well if you're wanting a completely new style I would say don't bother, but if you want to try and add another to it, I would suggest the Hibi style would make some good differences, though you might want to talk to Mido guy, he's the local Tajutsu master in the village. He paused to see if Ryu was following, now as for a Kenjutsu, I'm actually going to suggest Bajutsu or a staff for you. Inashi walked around the counter and over to a pile of what Ryu had assumed were unworked metal rods, but in fact they were simply unfinished staves of different types. Now, come here and close your eyes and let one of the staves pick you. Simply run your hand over them until you feel something that reflects your energy. Ryu thought the idea was strange, but if he had already placed some jutsu on the weapons to attune them to certain chakra types, then it would work that way. So Ryu complied closing his eyes and focused on his chakra to reach out to one of them. Over time he began to feel different callings as it were of echoes of his chakra, it was the same as if he had used an exploding tag to activate it, the match in his chakra allowed him to follow it. He Shigi san none of these feel completely right, but these five all echo me somewhat. He hoped that would convey his meaning as he wasn't old enough nor knowledgeable enough to understand the meaning behind what he was doing. Tanashi pulled small paper from a shelf, do me a favor, since I know you can channel your chakra, push some into this paper for me. Ryu did and watched as cut into four sections, one turning to dust another burst into flames, the other two pieces crumpled and became wet. Hiyashigi san what was that supposed to do? Ryu looked to the man questioningly. Tanashi on the other hand was stunned, no body had all five affinities. Well not anyone in this village, he would send a report on this to the Hakich after the boy left it was something to recheck. Well um, that paper showed which element or elements would be easier to learn for you, and well, you are balanced in all five of them. Ryu inwardly cursed his luck as to being special more than he already was. But then he was smiling like a loon because he was going to be an awesome ninja. Awesome, I figured wind cause that's the main clan stuff, but dad was a lightning and earth type, and mom was a fire and water type, I guess I just got the fluke or lucky of the draw, Ryu made an excuse that he would have to give to the Hakich. The Nashi nodded at the boy's words, he wasn't from fire country after all, so it wasn't as strange that the boy had something other than fire and water as his affinity, but to have all five, he just shook his head. This boy would be something to watch for in the future. He collected the five staves that were marked out by the boy and placed them inside of a seal array on his workbench before he activated it, merging them all together into one staff. Then he asked Ryu for some blood to make a retrieval seal, which the boy quickly bit his thumb to give it. Tanashi worked for several minutes applying pre-designed seals to the staff for resizing, repair, the summoning, and a few others for weight and chakra channeling. Well Anamika san. Please just Ryu, I'm not old enough to be considered an adult yet and really I don't ever want to feel that old. He laughed as he interrupted Tanashi. Alright kid, well I have a deal for you, pay me for your kid in the scrolls and I'll give you the staff under the condition that you only shop here for your weapons deal. Ryu if it were actually possible his eyes grew to the size of dinner plates, hi only here. Then he started to come down from the shock and remembered he had come for another reason too. Um, do you think I should get training weights since I'm not that fast sure he could push chakra to speed up and not really run out, but he wanted to not cheat the system and actually work for most of his skill. This kid would be a gold mine and well yay. Well I have three types of items like that now do you want pure muscle or pure speed or a mix of both. Since training weights would build his muscle more than anything, the resistance seal would build speed above all else, then the gravity seal would balance both out. Um, well speed would help with my tajutsu and bajutsu, but I need muscle for the strength because I don't want to have to use chakra to compensate. So could I do something to make me really fast and to get stronger but not look like it? The Nashi watched as the boy thought it out, he's pretty smart for his age if he's just starting, but then Minato was a super genius too when we went through the academy together. Ye kid it's a resistance seal and a gravity seal and both self-adjust as you get used to them. Come here and I'll put them on you. Ryu walked over and watched as Tanashi pulled some seal papers from his desk and had Ryu pull off his shirt, placing one seal on each bicep. They burned as they went onto the skin and Ryu instantly felt heavier all over and everything was sluggish. Haha <laughs> boy, take your time, after you get used to it, it'll take a few days before it readjusts again. 
Now if you look at them, you can see a blue number on the grav seal that's the amount of gravity being pushed on you, and on your res seal it's the resistance type. The first four levels are air from a strong breeze to a hurricane, then next three levels are like trying to move through water. The last three well if you can get the it far it would be like walking through mud up to stone, but not even soon a day ever reached that point. He tousled the boy's hair out of reflex when he saw the pout form. Don't worry though, and if you need to release the seals both are set to bore to turn them on or off, but turning them back on will start you out back at one and slowly charge back up to where you were over the day. Coughing into his hand, well that will be 985 Ryo. Ryo chalked for a moment before he pulled out his card and handed it to the man as he swiped it. Over a transfer and seal, getting the money he was owed. Well if you need anything else you know where to come shop. He laughed as Ryo walked out and headed home. First day of school. By the time he got up, dressed and ate he had an hour before he needed to be at the academy. Ryu was wondering over all the changes in his life since he died. Did everyone hate Naruto that much? All the memories of the beatings and chases flashed through his mind as he focused upon it only to find himself by the lakes again. Though everything seemed different now, there were buildings around the tower and the lakes had grown and merged with a red ocean, though it looked more purple now than red. Then there was the giant forest that surrounded everything but was truly was different than from his last visit were the six dragon statues that circled the tower. It wasn't hard for him to realize that each one represented an element, but the sixth one seemed to be something else. Mom. He didn't know if she was still here, but he hoped. Narukun. She rushed out of the tower and tackled him into a hug, I know everything that's happened I have been watching. I couldn't be more proud of you. She kissed him on the forehead. Now, you have class soon, and no, I am not going to tell you about the dragons they just showed up after you changed. Worry about them after you're a genin. The building all hold your knowledge in those areas, you learn different things new buildings will grow to show it. The forest are your memories and for now that's all you need to know. Now go you have been here too long, and if you are a good boy and graduate, I'll take that seal off of you, so you don't have to struggle to use your chakra. Ryu laughed at the end, I don't struggle, I have perfect control, that's what Niranichan said. Ashina looked at him, then looked at the chakra and focused on it, well that's what happens then, fine you go just promise to come see me more often. She pushed him out of the scape and looked at the sixth dragon, you know if I didn't know what you were, I would think you enjoyed that. Before she stalked off back into the tower. The dragons just laughed before going silent once more. Back in his home he looked at the clock, realizing he only had a half hour to get to the academy he checked his weapons pouches, seeing he had his kunai, shuriken and senban all where he wanted them. Then looking at the holster on his arm where his shrunken staff was held he smiled, grabbing the multi-storage scroll for all of his school things he slipped it into one of the pockets on his coat before he took off out the door. The walk to the school was calm, and no one did anything but whisper about him being a lost Namakas and so on. But now he had to play the idiot and befriend the obviously brooding boy that looked like he had a duck on his head for hair. Walking up to the boy he could hear two girls bellowing over who would sit next to Sasuke-kun. So he did the only right thing and took the seat. You must be a Chihasasuke. The boy looked at Ryu, HN. Ryu held out his hand, I'm Namika's Ryu, I want to say I know how you are feeling, and I am sorry for your lose. The girls were still arguing oblivious to what was going on. Turning to look at them, would you both be quiet, some of us actually want to be ninja and not whores. He spoke softly and precisely. The two girls rounded on him, for one he was in their seat, and two he called them whores in front of their Sasuke-kun. Before they could yell both found a needle sticking out of their throat shutting of their voices. Sit down and leave us alone, and I will consider removing them and allowing you to speak not yell at me. As I am your better, I am the Namika's heir, and if you wish to press matters I will remove you. Ryu's voice became a hushed whisper that only the two girls and Sasuke could hear. The girls each took a seat, and he removed the needles and flashed through a few hand signs making the green healing aura, and placed it over both of their throats before returning to his seat. No screaming or yelling as it will only cause you to lose your voice for a week. He looked back to Sasuke and winked at him with a smirk. The Achiha had watched all of it, seeing how the new boy was better than him, and he didn't like it he was an Achiha, but then the boy said he was an Amicus, so he was related to a Hokage and a respectable clan. But what did he mean by he understood, was his clan destroyed as well. He said he was the last. Maybe maybe this was someone he could talk to without pity or resentment. The days had rolled by into weeks, and Ryu had to keep his skills down after his display of them after the first day of classes. The Hokage had in so many words said that he needed to downplay them, but his training and healing he could display as he was working in the hospital. To say Ryu was happy or even agreeable to this was wrong. He was proud of his work and his training. After all what child of seven wouldn't be. But after several discussions and lessons with the Hokage on sealing and just simple matters of politics he understood as best he could. He grasped the concepts of everything he was taught and was a genius by the rights of the word, but he didn't feel that he had to truly work for anything that he learned. 
though sealing was one that he had to study and practice beyond just knowing hand signs and control of his chakra. He knew it would take years to master, but it was one thing that he could truly say that he strained and worked himself into a sweat to gain. He still didn't know what to make of his classmates, outside of the Nara air he didn't have any friends. But he did take into consideration the Aburam boy. The quiet appearance with the well above stoic nature that he exuded was somewhat confusing for the, the young boy. It was after one of his sessions with the wise and Siratobi that Ryu was found walking alone down the streets of Kanoha that he heard the distinct voice of his classmate shouting out the name of a jutsu. Katen. Finikusu no Hana, Phoenix Flower, but he didn't hear or feel any of the jutsu of which made him curious. Peering into the training field he could see Sasuke looking exhausted and slightly singed from obvious fire-based jutsu. Ichihasen why are you trying that level of jutsu? It's well above our level and could really hurt you. Ryu was caring it was in his nature and his training as a medic to be concerned. It's none of you concern. The Ichiha had retorted before he noticed the speaker was Ryu. I. It's a clan technique I am sure even you are aware of what this means in the rite of passage. Ryu nodded as he listened to Sasuke speak. True, but if you just work on the technique you still won't achieve it yet. You don't have the chakra reserves of control it's why you are so exhausted. I would say if you had the control you could use it once before it actually knocked you out from exhaustion. Ryu spoke as he flashed his eyes on and off gauging the levels of the boy. If you think you are so good why don't you do it? The challenge issued from the dark-haired boy. Now Ryu could have done many things at this point, but once again it seemed fate conspired against him. Fine, show me the hand seals. To which the Ichiha flashed through them slowly. Ryu nodded for a moment before he flashed through them twice on his own before he tried the jutsu. Hayden Fenikusu no Hana, pulling his hands to his mouth and spitting out several spheres of fire that seemed to take on the shape of flowers before they burned into the ground. I could do it maybe once more before I collapsed. The Ichiha was torn between looking pleased for the boy and upset that he the last of his clan couldn't do the jutsu. How? Was the only word he could utter. As he waited for Ryu to answer. Have you been doing and control exercises? To which the ebony-haired boy snorted. Well, just so you know doing those control exercises like tree walking, not only work on your control, but also on building your reserves. Not only that but all strong shinobi use it in battle, since you can cling to any solid surface with it, making you more apt to fight from different angles. Ryu walked up to a nearby tree and walked up the tree and back down. You just need to carefully push chakra out of your feet too much and you push yourself off and too little and you slip and don't stick. He smiled, he wanted to be nicer and since he was supposed to try and make friends with this boy he would try, but it mostly settled onto the Ichiha's shoulders. If you're so good why are you almost failing in class? He sneered. Oh well you want to be the best right? Well I don't want people knowing how good I am. That way they underestimate me. He brushed his hand along the back of his head, besides if I want to be on your team, then one of us has to be the lowest in the class, and I know you won't do it. He flashed a smile, hoping that was enough of an answer to deter the boy from digging too far into his skills. Why? Sasuke was confused why not show off your skills, why not prove that you are the best? Well since I think you want two answers. The first is because the less they know the quicker and easier it will be to win, and a true ninja doesn't look for the spotlight, we are meant to be warriors of the shadows working without names. If the enemy knows us then there aren't many missions we can do because it would draw attention. He had his brow scrunched as he recalled the words of the Hokage when he had recently asked the very same question. As for the other answer, it's because I think we are similar we have both had our families destroyed in front of us. Though mine was right when I was born but he doesn't need to know that he thought. The second is I would like to be friends with you not because you're an Achiha or because you are a prodigy, but because I can see that you would be a good person if people including you could see beyond those two things. He held out his hand, it was worth a try, and his reasons were out in the open as far as they should be, but maybe he could actually be friends with him and do as the Hokage had asked. Sasuke listened between what Ryu was saying and what his own thoughts were throwing at him. He's like me but doesn't want things given to him because of who he is. He doesn't care what people think of him. He wants to remain thought of as weak why. The answers to some of his own internal questions were answered and they seemed real and he had read some of them in the textbooks. But would that help him get his revenge? Well if Itachi still thought him weak it would be a bonus, but Ryu was being the weak one so they could be on the same team. Maybe Itachi killed his clan too that would make sense why he's being nice and trying to help me. He wants revenge for his clan too, so he has to be strong right? Well he has to want to be stronger, and he can already do this jutsu after just trying it once with a little practice over the hand seals. His mind came to the conclusion, Ryu could help him get stronger, and he could help Ryu get stronger somehow. Yes, friends Ryu, taking the other boy's hand they shook on it and both went to practice working on the tree walking exercise. Sasuke getting frustrated and Ryu helping him calm down when focused through the frustration. 
Several weeks had gone by since that day, and both boys kept their true skills hidden from everyone else, though Sasuke stayed ranked among the top of the class in everything they did, and Ryu still seemed only able to excel or grasp the control concepts in healing jutsu. Which made many think him weak and pathetic, including one of their instructors. Mizuki had kept an eye on the boy seeing that he couldn't do any of the basic jutsu taught in the academy and always seemed to struggle so hard with everything they were taught, not to mention the boy's tests were abysmal. But it was that determined will do anything look that had him start forming plans in his mind. It would take time maybe when they did their graduation exams in a year or so he could use the boy. His sensei would be pleased to get that scroll. Namikas, you have failed again, even a civilian could get a bunch in at this rate. Ryu looked up determined and flashed through the seals only to make five half-dead looking clones. Sasuke hid his smirk, knowing that Ryu could easily make the clones, as he was the one who taught him how to do it before everyone else. Sorry, Mizuki-sensei. But I just can't get it right. The teacher shook his head gently in disappointment outwardly, but inwardly he might try, and just maybe this would work and get him out of this damn village. Very well Namika-san, keep trying since you will need this skill to graduate and become a ninja. Weeks turned into months with both boys secretly training together either within the Achiha estates or the Namika's compounds. The only two people that knew anything of what the two boys had been up to were the Hokage and Nira, as they were the ones that Ryu had reported to on everything as he was ordered to. They both seemed happy with how the two boys were getting along, and even those of the council who noticed the two boys had a connection, though to them it was a one-sided rivalry that the Achiha permitted to give him something to beat around, allowed this with confidence. But now we find the Hokage and Ryu sitting together in a warded office for one of their sealing lessons. Now Ryu, over the last year we have been going over the needed knowledge to make seals, as well as the different styles and forms of sealing methods. I think you are ready to become an apprentice level seal master. Now as you know this means that you can start creating seals, however I will limit you to this list of seals until you can create them and modify them without using references. Tsuritobi was a harsh taskmaster, but how else had be managed to train the great and legendary Sanin? Ryu for all his skill and training looking at the list of nearly a hundred seals, was balking at the thought of what he was going to have to do. But unlike others that learned this art he was starting nearly a decade or two before them. Hi Hokage-sama. Ano. You and I both know that I can memorize all of these in a few weeks and can have them all mastered in about four months, then being able to modify them shouldn't take more than another three to four months. Ryu spoke as he thought over everything he had learned about seals and how they worked, and compared that to how he seemed to absorb anything he was taught like a never-ending sponge for knowledge and skills. I know Ryu, but it's not merely the list I have given you but the other lists that are stored in the storage seals at the bottom. They are copies of every seal in Kanoha, as well as every seal that myself and one of my students has encountered and recorded. The older man laughed as he watched Ryu pale at the notion of truly how many were there. What I know in Jutsu you will rival in seals my boy. Taking a drag from his pipe, this was the professor the god of shinobi holder and knower of well of 2000 jutsu that caused Ryu to fall out of his seat as the old man chuckled. Months had passed again since that meeting and his apprentice level of sealing began, which is now finding Ryu in his home meditating. Mindscape Ryu walked along the grass-covered mindscape noticing the changes since his last time reaching this level of meditation without being pulled here or ending up here on accident. The forest of his previous life memories seemed warded and far away. Whereas the tower and growing village seemed to be bustling with people that he knew and they were his knowledge and memories of them, the buildings housed his knowledge of what the represented weapons, food, clothing, medicines, even the clans. Though all his techniques were stored in the tower guarded by the six dragons that seemed to have appeared one day though he noticed each one represented an element and his personal strength with each one. Though none of this seemed to intrigue him more than the vast blue ocean that stretched on for miles, without a tinge of red now among it. He reached out and sought the red chakra, but none was to be found it confused him, he had studied his seal and knew that it shouldn't have been this quick to purify the demon's essence. Confused boy. A voice rumbled causing him to spin, seeing a dragon land before him, hi I should still have the yaokai, but it's all my chakra now. How? The dragon laughed as he took in his young host. Quite simple, without the soul of the demon there was no fighting or restraint, so you purified it faster, and with that seal your mother placed on you, it took what would have taken 30 years into mere 8. The dragon explained. All right, I can accept that, but now I have to ask is who are you, why are you in my head, and when did you start being able to talk? Ryu wanted answers as the only person that had been in his mind was his mother, and that wouldn't last much longer. The dragon smiled though it didn't look happy it felt that way, that would go back to the day that you were reborn. You learned a technique well to be honest many techniques from the QB. Though you have yet to seek them out in that tower. 
but that is getting ahead, when you were reborn one of those techniques activated, and all the people that were used to grant you your new appearance any bloodlines or affinites they had were harnessed and strengthened as they were added to you. The dragon paused to watch his young companion take this in rather quickly before he continued. That being learned you can use that ability after you look it over, it will be in your tower listed under Oni techniques, of which I dare say are at least a hundred of them. But as for my being here one of your parents I should say were descendants of a container as you are, though what they contained was a dragon. What bit of the dragon essence that was past one was completely awakened inside you because of that ability you have. Though as you can see I am outside that seal, and that was to judge you for a time before I made a decision. Ryu was accepting this information rather easily, but then when you have a large dragon telling you something you tend to believe it, especially after you had once housed a great demon, it's not that far-fetched. Why judge me and what is your decision? I judged your soul and wanted to see how becoming one with the powers of a demon affected you. It didn't corrupt you though I think that is more because of having those that care about you and you care about than anything else. Your study of sealing has led me to my decision. I will with your permission use your knowledge and mine and create a contract between the dragon clans and the Namikas clan and those you deem potential to be our summoners. Though the final decision will be from us. The dragon pulled on the great sea of chakra, twisting it into a scroll and feeding it power from both itself and from the vast stores Ryu had. Now, hold on to this and when you wish to return to the outside world will this to appear with you. It will be very draining and you will be tired, but it can be done, you will just use a massive portion of your chakra. Goodbye my summoner. The dragon dispelled in a cloud of smoke before Ryu could ask further. But instead of pondering over the fact that he had a summon contract, he dashed off to the tower and began touching every book there learning, relearning or discovering the knowledge and skills that he had seen, trained or had been left behind by the great demon he once contained. Before long and having a headache from being inside his own head and looping his knowledge, he decided to leave and return to the outside world. Real world, he opened his eyes only for the world to spin as he was covering in a cloud of smoke and the weight of a heavy scroll resting on his lap. Ugh only to pass out from the exertion. It was several hours before he woke up again, thankful for not having classes today, but it was to the sound of Sasuke yelling at him to get up that he cracked one bright blue eye open. What time is it Sasuke? As he sat up feeling the scroll laying next to him. It's almost noon at Toto. Sasuke stopped and froze at his words, did he really think of Ryu like that? Well Ryu just smiled and tackled the raven-haired boy, really. I think of you like my brother too. Over the year they had grown close and maybe now that he knew about the Achiha from the QB's memories he might be able to end the line. Sasuke truly smiled once he relaxed into the hug, he wasn't alone anymore. Ryu was like family, um Sasuke, I know you are proud of being an Achiha, but I would really like to be brothers. But we both have our clans. I mean I know a technique that would make us real family, but you would lose the Sharingan from it. But you would get the Kagigan. Ryu bit his lip. His voice in the back of his mind knew that if he did this the council would throw a fit, but then the Kagigan was an improvement and was immune to the Sharingan and the Byakugan. He looked at Sasuke, wondering what was going through his thoughts now. Sasuke was shocked at the fact that someone would offer this, but then looking at his family records with Ryu over the year as they shared their family histories, Sasuke had become free of the illusions about how grand his family was. Yet he still wanted revenge for their destruction, he held no true feelings of glory about the eyes that caused it all in the first place. And from what Ryu had explained to him about the Kagigan, well what little he would as it was declared public knowledge, it was slightly improved or almost a merger between the Sharingan and the Byakugan. Plus it would be one more step that Itachi wouldn't see coming, it would be worth it. I'll do it. Ichiha Sasuke is no more, Namika's Sasuke sounds better that way I won't be like that traitor or have to worry about going crazy from the eyes. Na spoke softly but with determination. Ryu hid his smile. This would leave only two Sharingan in the world and no one would know it. The good thing is since you haven't activated yours yet it won't hurt. He started flashing through hand seals, some two of which Sasuke had never seen before. Oni style. Ribsu Namak is no same placing his hand in Sasuke's chest and bidding his thumb of his free hand and placing it on the boy's forehead, letting the blood seep into his eyes. Pushing the chakra into the jutsu felt strange as he could feel it expanding and passing on his affinities and stretching Sasuke's reserves and destroying the Sharingan and regrowing the Kagigan. Then in a bright flash both boys collapsed to the ground. Both smiling as they looked into each other's blue eyes. Well the only thing different on the outside is you have blue eyes like mine. Best they are going to notice now aren't they? Ryu spoke, but Sasuke seemed to still be adjusting feeling the rush of power he could tell more than just his eyes had changed, he felt stronger, and he knew he had nearly twice as much chakra now it must be an amica's bloodline to have high reserves, control, and the Kagigan. One last thing, and it's going to suck, but I need to place the training seal on you. 
Since you are clan now, it basically forces you to have amazing control, because Chakra will be used for everything you do. He flashed through the sequence that he found and didn't call out the seal's name, since it wasn't really an Amica seal, but a Yuzumaki one, but who cares. Before he drew it on with blood to seal it. There, um. Yawn one more thing and then I think a nap. He chuckled as he saw Sasuke try and move only to fall over looking strained. Focus your chakra to move it'll feel easier after a few days. But no we can sign this. He unrolled the scroll and signed his name and blood in the first slot, Namika's Ryu, Sasuke following suit, Namika's Sasuke, rolling the scroll up and hiding it in one of the vaults. Well we can use that after we graduate, but now that we have signed it, I'll tell you it's a sum on contract for the clan. Though um. I think we should get all the stuff from the Ichiha district and move it here also destroy whatever else you don't want. Then after we are legal adults we can transfer everything over. Just tell the Hokage that you want your clan to be supervised by the Nara, it's what I did until I'm old enough. But that the two boys rested, one dreaming of having family true family, and the other for one sleeping blissful as the weight of the Ichiha clan fled from his shoulders, and the first Yuzu appeared in the boy's eyes. From the shadows the faint outline of a young woman giggled, Kami-sama was even more correct in what she had said about this boy, and the Ichiha will fall, and the true heir of the sage shall emerge. The figure vanished into motes of light. It had been several months now since they had become the Namika's brothers, at least to themselves. Sasuke had taken to using a henge over his eyes since that day, as he no longer had the black coloring of the Ichiha. But so far none had found out what the two boys had done, nor did they think anyone would find out soon. The weather had turned warmer signaling the end of spring and the start of summer in the village hidden in the leaves. Ryu's lessons on his own time were excelling his time spent working under Nier and the hospital, also was starting to garner him a small amount of respect among those that worked there. Inside the hospital Ryu and Nira could be found sitting in one of the small lecture rooms, now Ryu can you tell me outside of the traditional healing styles, what other ninjutsu might also be usable in being a field medic. Nira had started him in training to work outside of the hospital as well as inside. Ryu and his must strawberry blonde hair looked up at her from the scroll he had been studying. Um. Raten techniques could be used to restart the heart, Suetan may be used to clean wounds or aid in the lowering of body temperatures, and Doton could be used to help create casts to brace broken bones. And if very controlled I would think Katen could be used to help remove poisons from wounds by boiling them out. Then of course Futon could be used for breathing issues or airborne toxins. She smiled at the younger boy that was once known as Yuzumaki Naruto. Had anyone told her she would be teaching the container of the QB to work on healing and medicine she might have laughed, remembering how the kid once was treated. But now only a few knew that dark secret. Correct, Ryu-kun. Now, because the Hokage and I know about your true level of skills and control, we have decided to let you choose to start learning one of two different skills. Nira smiled with her lavender eyes. They had been discussing for several weeks on giving Ryu another skill that was very rare. As they had already seen his elemental affinity tests. Shocking both of them to find all five main elements balanced as his primary. It was a well-guarded secret that Makutan wasn't truly outside the grasp of someone with an earth and water affinity, it would just be harder and not up to the scale of those with the bloodline. Then there was also the secret technique that Tsunade herself wields the Tenshi Strenix Jutsu. But just the mention of something extra to learn was enough to bend Ryu's ear to the chance of learning something new, and maybe if he could share it with Sasuke. Which brought him to wonder how hard it was for his brother to pretend to maintain the arrogance that seemed to bubble from having the Sharingan. They had both read over the locked Achiha scrolls. Flashback, Sasuke are you sure we should be reading all the history of the Sharingan? Ryu had asked as they had finally unpacked all the scrolls from the Achiha compound and placed them in the hidden vault in the Namika's library that Ryu had placed a blood seal on. Yes Ryu, even though I am not an Achiha anymore, you brought the clan into yours so they are Namika's secrets, even if the Dejutsu is no longer in the clan. It was a loophole that both boys had found out about reading the village laws. They had gone to Shikaku Nara and explained what they wished to do, and he helped them draw up the paperwork that combined their clans under the Namikas. Having them both sign and seal it in their blood, telling them that when either one became a Chunin or turned 16, that he would submit the scroll as clan law between the two, as he was now caretaker of both estates until that time. Which doing this was in his words less troublesome. But both boys had read over the scrolls from the founding of the clan and the discovery that they were once part of the Hyuga clan until their founder Madara was said to have returned one day with the heir of power and the Sharingan. It said over time he took several men and women from the branch family and they too returned with the new eyes. They read further and discovered more truth behind them being insane and Sasuke eventually said, I'm so glad that you got rid of that from me. Who knew that the true power behind all the Dejutsu are actually from spirits and demons. Do you know which created the Kagigan? This was a stumble in the grand scheme of things by Ryu's plans, but in truth he did know which demon and he did know why. 
Sasuke, the Kagegan was actually placed in the Namika's clan by the Shinigami. Which wasn't a total lie, as had it not been for the involvement it would have never happened. Though leaving out the fact that the QB made it to destroy the Sharingan wouldn't have settled well. Really. Well I mean that would explain some of the abilities that it has, plus there is no backlash from using it like the demonic eyes and bloodlines. This is so cool we have eyes from a god. Sasuke quickly stopped himself and returned to a more compass state. Well we can study all the jutsu scrolls and training techniques, even if we can use them yet we can memorize them for later, so that when the we are able to we can just do it a few times. The two boys nodded and pored over the scrolls, as Ryu had tested Sasuke for his affinities shortly after he had been tested, revealing that for now the boy had Katen, Raiden, and Doten as his elements, but there was always time to build up the others with practice. Which discovering the affinity training both boys had started working on them. Making very slow progress regardless of their reserves, control and skill. It was one of the few things that Ryu had to fight to work for because of all of his affinities, and Sasuke was just one step closer to having more secrets to destroy the last Ichiha with. Then flashback, alright, what are my choices near Anichin? He smiled thinking of all the possibilities they could do together. Well, since you are almost 8 years old now and have had time to adjust to the academy, and even though you are doing very poorly, she snickered, we realize that there are other containers that you may end up having to fight or defend the village from. So you either need a skill to help against them or make you as strong as they are. So the Hokage has given me two scrolls one is for the ability to learn Maokuten, and the other is for the Tenshi strength. She paused as she pulled the two scrolls from her pack, now the Maokuten will be the most difficult, as it's technically a sub-element bloodline, whereas the Tenshi strength is a constant and pure chakra control technique. And even with your natural ability to learn at accelerated levels, it should take at the very least three years for either one to be considered learned and usable. Even if you keep surprising me. Ryu looked between both scrolls when a mischievous glint flashed through his eyes. Can I look at both of them first to decide? Since I have to work on all the exercises for my other affinities, as well as I have almost got two more levels of Tijutsu added to mine, plus my ceiling training, I need to see which one would fit easier into it, rather than just picking one. He smiled up at his sensei's sister. She nodded not knowing that he could just as easily memorize the scrolls. Handing them to her he unrolled the Tenshi scroll and took his time to look at everything twice before he rolled it back up with a frown and looked over the other scroll on Maokuten. Wow, Hain's super strength would be awesome. But the Maokuten has more uses in and out of battle, especially if I study more about herbs and plants I could practically grow anything. Besides you know I love gardening. He flashed a bright smile. Alright then Ryu, we even have a teacher for you that has the bloodline. So study the scroll and pick up whatever books and scrolls you need on herbalism and botany, you will meet with Yamamoto on Tuesdays, leaving you to work with me on Monday Thursday and Friday, and your Wednesday lessons. I'm Jump Lazy author no jutsu 2 years, do 10 year old boys one with raven black hair another with strawberry blonde, could be seen sparring inside a private training ground, both obviously talented in jutsu, yet the style was nothing that could be described accurately. Between Ryu's original combination of Hummingbird and Jukin, mixed with a Hebe that he had learned from a scroll, as well as the now incorporated Interceptor style, the two boys had decided to rename the style. As it had speed, finesse, power, and even the hidden destruction of the Jukin strikes. They decided on Saishin Rik no Michi, or the way of the spirit dragon. As it not only affected the body but the chakra. During this time Sasuke had mastered his Kagigan, though he was still below Ryu in true strength of it, but it didn't matter it was just one more Cesar the boys shared. I think that's enough of Toto, since we have our exams today and after today we can stop hiding most of our skills. What sucks though it's we're getting stuck with Sakura Mesu. Unless I can talk Aji-san into letting us have Hinata-san. Though that means telling him some things that we have been keeping secret. He looked to Sasuke to see his reaction, only to get a nod for the go-ahead. Alright let's go and see the old man before school then. Together both boys ran across the rooftops to the Hokage Tower, each one a little worried about the repercussions of what they have hidden. Knocking on the door and getting the signal to enter both boys walked in, wearing nearly identical outfits of dark blue muscle shirts and black pants with a dark blue stripe. The only difference was that Sasuke wore a standard coat in black and blue with an amica's eye on it, and Ryu wore a sleeveless black trench coat with dark blue lining with an amica's eye on it. Okage-sama we have some things to tell you that need be for your ears only. Ryu said as he walked in with Sasuke behind him. Saratobi had only heard Ryu talk like this once in all the years since he became Ryu, so he would indulge him, signaling for the Anbu to leave, as what academy students could harm the Hokage. Once the door closed Ryu pulled out his copy of the agreement that the Nara had drawn up for them and handed it to the Hokage. Seeing the old man's brow raise while reading it, Ryu my boy, this is all well and good, but the Restoration Act won't allow it because you have two different Dejutsu. 
Ryu smirked slightly as he nodded to Sasuke who dropped the henge over his eyes, revealing them to be crystal blue like Ryu's. Seeing as he doesn't have the Sharingan I don't see a problem, that's actually why we are here Jai-san. We want to have Hinata on our team, since between our Tajutsu styles and our Dejutsu, we are the most able to coordinate with each other. The Hokage stared between the two boys and twitched his fingers, what did you do? Ryu tilted his head two years ago we did a blood brothers bond, my blood seemed to have destroyed the Sharingan and replaced it with the Kagigan. We didn't want to say anything, but now we have to. Don't be mad. The Hokage read the signs from the younger boy. The say he was mad was far from the truth, he had ensured Sasuke stayed and even helped complete the mission that was not known to anyone to destroy the Achiha clan because of the war they were going to start. If this worked they might be able to bring Itachi back and bring him into the clan, well he looked at the papers. There was no Achiha clan anymore. Sasuke had banished all Sharingan wielders from the Achiha clan as part of the merger to the Namakas. This had not written all over it, but the boy's ideas were very strong. Is there anything else I need to know Ryu looked to Sasuke and then back to the Hokage, we have already moved everything to my compound and he is trained in my style and even has mastered his eyes, which is why we want teamed with the Hayuga, it's a better chance for a salt recon team since Ino will be with Shikamaru and Choji and if Sakura was placed on our team she's too weak in her skills and training that it will hinder the team along with the fact that she is too obsessed with Sasuke, it would affect everything from training to missions. Saratobi had to hand it to the boy he trained him too well, he chuckled a little, and from the look of it, Ryu had passed down quite a bit of that training to Sasuke. Before I say anything, Sasuke are you aware of all of Ryu's true skills? Sasuke just nodded, Mayaniki told me of his training in Jutsu and Sealing, plus showed me quite a bit, but I know I can't reach that level yet because I was tainted by the Achiha, but I am getting better. He smiled a true smile that surprised the Hokage, especially at hearing him call it tainted, but it was far better than he could have hoped as he had a glimpse of the future had he not pushed Naruto to become Ryu, but for now he would have to go with what they had done it changed everything. I see, well then could either of you explain Sasuke's true level of skill. He looked Ryu, who simply nodded and placed a hand on Sasuke's shoulder. Mayatoto has affinities in Raiden, Katen, and Doten, and has started showing signs of building up a Futen, but it's a struggle, he's almost on par with me in Tajutsu, though Kinjutsu he has chosen twin Nadachis, where I use a staff. We both have signed our clan summon scroll, but have yet to attempt to summon because of our rank. His chakra control is almost as high as mine, seeing as I use the training seal on him as well. We are about even on Jinjutsu easily see the B ranks and Ninjutsu up to being able to use B ranks as far as our elemental stuff with your training and what we do all the time we're past the leaf exercises and almost complete with the mid-level steps for each of them. Anything else. He rattled it all of like he had a list in his head, the only thing he left out was that both of them were almost done mastering the Tenshi strength, where Ryu was almost a seal master, Sasuke was well on his way to mastering one-handed seals. They were brothers, but instead of copying each other they balanced each other. The Hokage could see their reasonings and knew Ryu wasn't lying about his skills as he personal, along with two others had trained him in them, and if Ryu said that Sasuke was where he was, then it should be interesting. Especially now that the council had no say in the matters. Neither boy knew this, but the council had placed them in the Krar clan restoration act, making them legal adults at Genin, so that they could begin to flourish more under their control. Though with this contract between two clan heads abolishing one clan to join another left Ryu as the clan head and Sasuke as his heir until the time that but the village no longer had a Sharingan outside of Kakashi, which made him wonder if Naruto. Ryu might be able to fix that for the man, as they were going to be on his team and only after they passed the tests would the third Hokage reveal the truth about the boys. You make a valid point, I will ensure the teams are set how you ask, though your sensei will be had at Kakashi, since the council in their wisdom made him teach the Achiha, which we don't seem to have one of. Sasuke you may go I need to speak to Ryu alone for a moment. Sasuke nodded and left, now Ryu we have two requests. One Mizuki is planning on using you to get the forbidden scroll, which means I need you to fail this exam, holding up his hand, don't worry I will ensure you pass, because I am promoting you to Genin right now. The second is I would like you to look into Kakashi's health records and see if you can't figure a way to either change his Sharingan or find a way to reduce the effects on his reserves. It's a field medic that replaced it. These will both be C-rank missions, I will also consider the Achiha mission a success and transfer the B-rank pay into your accounts, and Nira has also requested that you be recognized with the title of journeyman healer and trained field medic. Handing the boy a black headband with his hit I-8 on it, as well the two insignia for the journeyman healer and field medic. You may go ahead and wear the last two, but I would advise in holding off on the first until you complete your mission with Mizuki. The Anbu will follow you and are aware that you are taking the scroll under my orders to lure out the traitor. Only they will know of your true purpose. Dismissed.
The old man smiled as he looked at the young man. At the academy, Aruka and Mizuki were watching over the students go over the written portion of the exam, seeing Ryu struggle with even this part only solidified Mizuki's hopes, as he knew that the boy still couldn't perform the bunshin technique. Alright, pencils down, the next part and last part of the exam will be ninjutsu, you will first use the substitution jutsu followed by henge, into either myself of Mizuki, then you will create three bunshin. We will call you in one at a time, with that the two instructors entered the side room and began calling them in one at a time, Sasuke already being henged to cover his eyes, and the Namika's clan symbols on his clothes was one of the first, and fortunately they learned that you could layer henges and dispel certain ones. He returned with the oh so it has smirk in place and gave a slight twitch to Ryu, what did he want? Ryu sighed, knowing that he didn't tell the Hokage that he taught Sasuke the sign language, I have to fail the test to help them catch Mizuki, since he wants me to steal something to get me blamed for his theft. Namikas. Ryu looked up and gulped, in fear before going to take the last portion of the test. Alright Ryu, you may begin. He flashed through the seals and substituted himself with a chair, then henged into Aruka sensei before he gulped and made horrifying clones of epic fail. Why can't I do these damn clones? He kicked one making it dispel, even though they were solid, but he still made a show of being angry. I'm sorry Ryu you fail, you're welcome to try again next year. But that they all walked out of the room, be back tomorrow for your team assignments at noon, those of you that didn't pass may return in three months for classes. Everyone left, even Sasuke given Ryu an arrogant smirk before walking out the door. Leaving only Mizuki and Ryu alone, Ryu, I know how hard this must be for you, but there is another method of graduating, though they don't use it much because they don't think kids are capable, but I know you can do it. The man looked down at the boy in hope seeing his bait be taken. I'll do it, I'll do anything to become a ninja. Ryu inwardly threw up he hated this facade and would be glad when it's over. Good now this is what you have to do. Later that night, Ryu had easily sneaked into the Hokage Tower and found the Forbidden Scroll and left without anyone catching him. Though it by no means didn't pique his curiosity, and also he had to look like he was trying to learn a jutsu from the scroll after all it was part of what he had to do. Though he fully intended to memorize the whole damn thing as well as make a copy at home. Jumping into the clearing he knew he had about an hour before anyone would show up, so he set to work looking over the scroll. Hage bunch and air and kinjutsu special note clones memories transfer back to user when clone is dispelled. Akuhatsu bunch and air and kinjutsu don't. Jigoku no Numa A ranked Kinjutsu creates a swamp like quicksand that constantly drains chakra. Basengan S ranked Kinjutsu, those were the first four on the scroll, and they only became more strange and weird after that, but Ryu could easily understand why they would be considered Kinjutsu, as if you didn't have the proper controller level of chakra, it would kill you or severely injure you to use them. But he continued memorizing the scroll that took most of the hour, before he decided that the Kage Bunshin would be the easiest for him to have learned in this amount of time. Knowing the Hokage was watching him from that little ball of his and the Anbu were nearby hiding. Good you're here, now give me the scroll. Ryu looked up, Mizuki-sensei. I did it, I got the scroll, and I even learned one of them like you said I could. I'm a ninja now. Doing a small dance and accidentally flaring his chakra to alert the Anbu. No, I want to learn more of them. Please. Ryu turned with pouty lips and puppy eyes, only to see Mizuki sneering at him, you think I give a shit, I used you boy. You stole the scroll not me. And now I am going to take it to Orochimaru and get away from this damn village. But first I am so going to enjoy killing the last Namikas. He spoke pulling out a few Mashuriken, as Ryu flashed a few seals yelling out Kage Bunshin no Jutsu the clearing filled with shadow clones, he himself storing the forbidden scroll before anyone noticed and Mizuki jaw dropped at the sheer number of them. All the Ryus at once, you are under arrest for treason against Konoha, come peacefully or not. Each clone dropped into a stance Mizuki had never seen, and the man just scoffed. Like some dead last could beat me you're just a pathetic boy living of the coattails of your family's legacy. You're worthless. With that the mad started to attack his way through the clones. Then I have to say one thing. Boom letting each clone detonate backing Mizuki around between the heart of Kage Bunshin, before only a cloud of smoke remained, leaving a bleeding and broken traitor unconscious on the ground. As the Anbu arrived and looked between the boy and the unconscious Junin, Genin Namikas, would you care to explain? Ryu just nodded, hi, under orders of Hakage-sama, I was to take the forbidden scroll and lure the traitor out, however having to perfect the ploy I pretended to study the scroll upon signaling for your rival, Mizkui attempted to attack me and slander my clan, so I created several Bakuhatsu Bunshin, leading him to believe they were merely Kage Bunshin, Ithni proceeded to surround him and detonate them one at a time, giving enough force to incapacitate and minimal injury. The Anbu behind his mask was stunned that a genin could use that jutsu, let alone make several, but then if the rumors of the Namika's control was anything to go by, he might have been able to do it, but by all accounts the kid was the dead last. 
They turn the scroll and report to the Hokage. Hokage Tower. Ryu stood in front of the Hokage as the elder man gave him a scrutinizing look, Ryu, as you are aware these jutsu aren't meant for normal genin, let alone most genin. However knowing you and your unique situation you have the reserves and chakra to use the two clones that you managed to somehow master in an hour. Is there something you wish to fill me in on, or will have I have enforced the insubordination for not giving me your true level of skills? The Hokage smiled softly, but there was the hint of the question and concern there as well. Ryu sighed, I will tell you one thing that I haven't. I have a perfect eidetic memory. I just have to see it once and I will be able to recall what I have seen. That includes all hand seals that I am able to observe for jutsu, any scroll I have read, and everything I have been taught. Sasuke and I are almost able to complete use the Tenshi strength without problems about another 5 to 6 months. As for anything else, if it's about memorizing or anything as such then I know it, even if I am not capable of using it. Which at the moment I know well over 600 jutsu and can use about 400 of them. Seals I have memorized everyone that you have shown me and the ones I have learned on my own from the Namika's library, as well as the until recently Ichiha library. Sasuke is right behind me, though his is more along the lines of having truly memorized them. He looked the Hokage in the eyes to show he was telling the truth. Saratobi sighed, relieved but even more concerned for the fact that Ryu knew everything he ever read or saw, which meant quite a bit as he spent hours in the tower, the library, the hospital, and among all the scrolls and books in the combined libraries of the now formerly two clans now made Namikas. Ryu, I trust you to know when you are able to use those jutsu and skills, and I can honestly say you wouldn't endanger Sasuke with allowing him to use them without being capable. But I will say this. Place your training seal in your teammate and help her break away from that shy mold. Her clan elders are trying to break her, but her father doesn't want that. He will act cold and indifferent, but he has requested some form of helping her. Ryu nodded to the Hokage, between him and Sasuke they could easily bring Hinata up to their level and perhaps get to see more of the Hayaga Jutsu to incorporate into their own. We'll do it, since we were going to anyways. But I should go to bed, I need to rest for the teams tomorrow. Oh and the mast is gone, and so will Sasuke's. Inform our sensei of our actual skills or don't it might be fun knocking Jown in around. He smiled and laughed as the clone a note on the desk. Jai-san. You know Kage Bunshin will get you out of all the paperwork. Jana. The Hokage stared at the note for a moment before he smiled evilly, oh yes this would be the defeat of the great demon of the Hokage's dot paperwork. Next day Hokage's office. The Hokage or rather several Hokage's could be seen milling about his office as the Jounin instructors walked in to be briefed over their new teams or rather select their new teams. Among them were Saratobi Asuma, Yuhi Kurinai, Hada Kakashi and several others, though they don't matter to me p, ah welcome, we have much to discuss before we can get to the teams you want to have, as there have come to my attention several interesting facts. He motioned for them to sit, as one of the bunshin snorted at the come to my attention line. Forgive me Hokage-sama, but what could have changed enough to alter the team choices? Kurinai asked, this would be her first time being a sensei in comparison to Asuma, having had a few teams and Kakashi failing all teams he had ever been given. Well the first issue would be concerning the Namikas brothers. They stopped there watching the expressions change, because as far as they knew only one Namikas was there, what's the other's name Pops. Asuma was confused he had kept an eye on Ryu, seeing that he showed some skill in wind manipulation. Oh that's rather simple I would think they are Ryu and Sasuke Namikas. He smirked turning to Kakashi, which as of last night there is no longer an Ichiha clan. And you Kakashi are the current and only user of the Sharingan in the village. Since Sasuke Ichiha is now an Amicus and has gained the Kagigan instead of the Sharingan. The Jounin in the room looked aghast, especially those that were wound tightly around the council's fingers. Which leads me to believe that there was an affair leading to Sasuke's birth. And thus making the Ichiha clan subject to the Namikas, both boys are aware of this as they were two ones who brought it to my attention with clan records for proof. As such I have adjusted the teams to fit. Team 7 will be both Namika's boys and Hayaga Hinata, Team 8 will be Inazuka Kiba, Aburam Shino, and Haruno Sakura. Team 10 will be the Inoshika Cho combination. They went on to name several other teams before most of the Jounin left, leaving only Kakashi and Kurinai in the office. Excuse me Hokage-sama, but how does the Kagigan have to do with teams? Both ask at almost the same time. Each for different reasons, Kurinai because she had watched over and helped Hinata all these years since her mother had died, and Kakashi because all his plans for his team went out the window, and Tis was the second time. The first had been when the demon Brad had been killed. Now he was supposed to only train the Achiha, but it seemed they didn't even have one of those now. It's quite simple, from what we have been told the Kagigan act similar to both a Sharingan in the aspects of Jinjutsu and Pregonative battle reflexes, but lacks the skill to steal Jutsu, it also crossed to the Byakugan in the aspect that it reveals chakra networks and makes them rather immune to Jinjutsu. 
also the Namika's style utilizes similar attacks as the Jukin, but more importantly is this. When active they cannot be copied by a Sharingan, nor can their own pathways be perceived by the Byakugan. The Hokage could see the thoughts in the two younger Jounin's eyes. Kakashi was the hound of the council and did purely what they asked, and the Hokage knew it. It was one of the reasons he pushed Ryu and Sasuke together to break the hold on Kakashi, but now he could see the better advantage of switching the teams. Kakashi was a better tracker than Kurinai, and so that's what would happen. With these changes Kakashi you will be taking team 8 as a tracking team. Kurinai you will have team 7, since all three will be great Jinjutsu users. Dismissed to pick up your teams. He then sent the completed new list to the academy. Academy, the freshly graduated Genin were milling about until both Sasuke and Ryu walked in wearing their Namika's outfits and both having stunning blue eyes, now that Sasuke refused to wear his henge anymore. Both seemed to laugh at a joke as the walked in before the entire class was stunned into silence, but it was soon broken by the girls who looked between the two boys and squealed. Causing both of the to cringe as they made their way to some seats, both taking one on either side of Hinata. When the fangirls approached they both held up a hand, she doesn't act like a pathetic excuse for a ninja, one said while the other continued, whenever we enter a room, she works hard and tries her best, plus she isn't as annoying as the rest of you. Sasuke finished. Azuruka walked into the classroom and yelled for silence and everyone to be seated. Alright congratulations to all of you for graduating, now on to team assignments. He unfolded the paper and read off a few teams until he got to Team 7, Team 7 will be Namika's Ryu, Hayaga Hinata and Namika's Sasuke wait what? He looked up from the paper as did seemingly everyone seeing the two boys staring back with identical blue eyes and the Namika's clan crest proudly displayed on their coats. What? In accordance to village laws, any two clans consisting of less than 10 members may merge their clans to create a stronger clan under one of the previous clan's names and may be done only if any bloodlines are compatible. Both boys turned on their Kagegan's hands looked around the room. Seeing how Sasuke developed the Kagegan instead of the Sharingan there was no issue. Now. Who is our sensei? Ryu spoke forcing down the laughter knowing that they purposefully destroyed the Sharingan and Beckham true brothers, Ryu being older by only a few days actually. Your sensei will be Yuhi Kurinai. He continued down the list while Ryu tried to ponder why it wasn't Hadoksan, unless he was only supposed to train Sasuke then, that meant they were going to dick the team, and with Hinata on the team, the Hayaga wouldn't hear of that. Time passed until Kurinai walked into the, the room and saw all three sitting together comfortably, the profile she had been handed by the Hokage told a much different story than the ones the academy showed, and she was glad to have looked over them before coming, or she would have been shocked at seeing the two boys so comfortable with each other. Team 7 meet me at training ground 34 she then shunshined out. The team stood up and ran out the door, the boys had yet to master that skill, but would soon one day, they ensured that Hinata was between them as they ran through the streets to the roofs to get to the training ground, all the while their sensei watched as the two boys seemed to keep a pattern of moving in a controlled form, switching from leading to following, but staying on either side of Hinata. She smiled at the teamwork, but realized that her test might not work on any of them, as it was to track here through several Jinjutsu, but given the level of teamwork shown, as well as the recognizing Hinata as an asset to the team, already showed the teamwork that she wanted from them, and it would only get better with time. She then took off ahead of them to the training field and placed several Jinjutsu over the area, time to see how perceptive they really are. Team 7 entered the training ground, only to hear Hinata gasp, the two boys looked at each other, their Kagegan swirling already. Hinata activate your Byakugan. She flashed through some hand seals, and the veins bulged dispelling the Jinjutsu from their sight. Ryu looked at her for a moment, Hinata do you mind if I do something that will make you stronger? He asked knowing he already had permission to place the seal. Ah no. Ryu-kun what do you mean? Ryu smirked, it's a seal that my clan uses to help increase your chakra capacity and control. It's will also make it so you don't have to use hand signs to activate your eyes. Sasuke and I are both wearing it and will until our birthdays. You would have to wear it probably about two years, but that depends on how hard you train. She thought about it, I could be strong like Sasuke and Ryu-kun. Hi I'll do it. Ryu quickly drew on the seal with ink, as he knew if he used blood, it would change her eyes like it did to Sasuke, and then flashed through several hand seals, before pushing chakra into the seal activating it and watching it sink beneath the surface of her skin. Now you will have to use chakra to even move so be very careful for a few days. She nodded already feeling the strain from just doing that, but as a high Uga she Alred had nearly perfect control and decent reserves, even if she only used the Jukin for chakra, but she could feel that this would make her so much stronger. Now we can see you Kurinai sensei so what do you want us to do? Ryu grinned as he noticed her looking at the three insignia on his coat, the journeyman healer, the field medic, and the journeyman seal master. 
Sasuke just smirked playfully as Hinata smiled at the two boys, surprised by how they truly are, though her father had told her enough last night not to be stunned by it all. Well my original test was easily passed, seeing as you three can see through or are immune to Jinjutsu. She frowned, though that just means I only have to teach you how to use them, it seems that I won't be able to teach you two boys much, since the Hokage has filled me in, though it will also be good for all of us, since we will be working together on teamwork, formations, and getting Hinata up to your level. Kurinai sighed, this team would be overkill in a few years, but perhaps it would be the best to bring the Hayaga out of their arrogance. Since you two boys are fairly well rounded between ninjutsu, tojutsu, kinjutsu, jinjutsu we need to get Hinata, and myself, it seems up to a more versatile ability. As a ninja of the Hidden Leaf your clan restrictions on what you may learn do not apply. That means that everyone is expected to learn jutsu, working on their elemental affinities if you have them which we will find out. We will work to make your tojutsu style more fitting to your abilities and learn at least one weapon style. She had read the boys' profiles, and by the look of it, they knew already that this was mostly for Hinata to get up to par and out of that shell that her clan elders had beaten her into. So you all pass, we will meet at 5 am every day for physical and weapons training, we will break for lunch at 1 from 2 to 6, we will study and work on chakra control and your jutsu libraries. Ryu you have your commitments after that I am aware of them. That will be the next month to two months. Kurinai looked at her team as they all seemed to smile at the thought of all that work. She couldn't help but smile as well, knowing that she would be right there with the three of them learning and working unlike most other Jounin, she wasn't going to just flop around and be lazy with the training. It had been nearly six months since the formation of Team 7 under Kurinai. As we find the team practicing in a training ground that most people never seem to want to enter, that being Training Ground 44 or better often known as the Forest of Death. They had moved here three months ago as to keep prying eyes away from the Namika's brothers and Hinata's own unique training. But even more so for the help of a good friend of their sensei one Midrashi Anko. Alright Gaki's Nai-chan has asked me to help you with your tojutsu some more. The rather busty and none to modest Akubetsu Jounin had stated as she dropped from a tree to the forest floor in front of the team. Well at least to help Hinata anyways, she eyed the timid girl. She had been observing the training for the team for several months to help her get a feel for how they worked, and even she would admit if only to herself that they were impressive for a bunch of kids. Which to most people that was damn good. Throwing scrolls at the two boys, these are a few scrolls on tojutsu styles that aren't inside of Konoha, since you two seem to be developing a style that meshes several others together, I think these will work for your brats. She smirked, also I watched your affinity training and took the liberty of liberating some techniques for you on some of my missions. Turning to Hinata and walking over towards her. You little missy are coming with me, we will meet here every day at 5am, warm up, stretch and get started. I will then take you with me for some more in-depth Kinoichi training. She paused seeing Kurinai coming in. Let's go now. Grabbing Hinata and shunshining away. The two boys looked at the scrolls and then at each other before they noticed their sensei coming in. Anko is a bit eccentric, but she knows what she's doing. I hope. She looked at the two boys as they had started to unroll their scrolls. Watching how Ryu worried his lower lip as his memorized every detail of the scrolls. Then seeing how Sasuke tapped his fingers as he worked on it. These were the only two noticeable means that she had seen of how the two boys poured their mental facilities into their training. Looking closer at the two boys she noticed that they were also working on chakra training exercises, as she spotted the glint of Senbin dangling from their ears and several other places that were exposed skin. She had learned the truth about Ryu or Naruto take it, however you will three months ago when she had confronted the Hokage about their skills. Flashback, Okage-sama, I don't know what prank or twisted thoughts were running through your head about giving me my team, but they are obviously not genin. The red-eyed woman huffed as she had come from another training session with her team, only to find out they were once again already aware of the skills that she was teaching them. Even if Ryu had given her the training seal as well, she knew it was far beyond the scope of what mere children were able to do. Saratobi Hirazan sighed as he looked up from his papers as the distraught Janin. Kurinai-chan, I think it's time to help you understand a few things about your team. Taking up his pipe and filling it he continued to speak, please sit down for it's a long story. He watched as she sat down in the chair with an indignant huff, he keeping the chuckle to himself. The story begins sadly on the night of the QP's attack on our village. He spoke for several hours about Naruto and what he had learned about the boy and what the boy himself had learned under Their meaning his and Nira's guidance, tutelage. The only thing is Ryu may be only 13, but his control, level of knowledge and skills themselves are that of someone much older. He sighed as he looked at the picture of Minato on the wall, Naruto or Ryu as we will, is just like his father, a genius. Though the boy is blessed one step higher with what is personal medic and I call a memory. He noticed Kurinai's confusion and so he explained. 
Ryu has the natural ability to remember everything he has read, seen, smelled, touched or tasted with 100% accuracy. He may not having the Sharingan to copy things with, but it doesn't matter as long as he can see it, it will only take several attempts before he himself is capable of figuring it out. He slid a folder with his seal on it over to her. She noticed the markings indicating that this was the Hokage's personal file, and no one had ever seen it as the blood seal on it would indicate. Looking up to him she saw the nod to go ahead as she read through the detailed list of training that Ryu had received under his orders and supervision. It took several minutes to read through it all before she looked up to him. But all of this training why is he only a genin? Sasuke seems to also have nearly the same repertoire as Ryu from what I have noticed in training. That is because Ryu has been training with Sasuke for almost three years in secret. After the adoption jutsu they did to bring him into the Namika's clan. The Hokage smiled warmly as he remembered all the times he had spoke with Ryu over what they were doing and getting detailed reports on Sasuke. They have merged the entirety of the Achiha libraries with the Namika's ones, making them all Namika's information and scrolls. Going as far as to rewrite them and place blood seals on everything that is a style, a jutsu or any such thing that could be considered clan secrets. He took a long drag from his pipe. The only areas of study that Ryu and Sasuke differ on is Ryu is a journeyman seal master and a journeyman healer and full field medic. Withstanding the two boys' elemental affinities. She tried to absorb everything from Ryu being the host of the QB, the boy she herself had helped many times after attacks on him. All the way to all the private training he had received. Hokage-sama why did you train him so much? She was worried as between the dark creature that he held at bay and the boy's large thirst for knowledge it resembled too much of Orochimaru. That would be because I felt indebted to the boy for all that I have done to wrong him. As well as what this village has done against him and therefore his father's wishes. The elder man sighed as if a great burden had been lifted from his shoulders. In a year when the exams come I wish for you to support them by allowing them to take the exams. This is a scroll containing all the affinity exercises for the boys and Hinata once you decide to test them. Ryu has already mastered one affinity because of its ability to calm and control Biju. Holding up his hand, no, I am not aware of how he came into this affinity, though I have my guesses, but only he could tell you. The man chuckled. Then flashback, she shook her head, alright boys, I'll give you another few minutes to look over the scrolls before we start working on your elements. Both boys looked up for a moment and in unison, hi sensei. She could only imagine how poorly things would have went for Ryu if he would have remained Naruto. Though it would only be another year before the Turnamikas would be mentioned. Even now she could see the boy's hair loosing the red tinge and becoming more blonde, just like his father's and his original color. Now, I am fully aware of what you have been trained in. She half-heartedly glared at the two boys. I have spoke to the Hokage as I thought you were being used as a very rude prank on me. However he has filled me in as completely as he could on Ryu's past. Here the two boys looked at each other before looking back to their sensei. Then you are aware as to who he was previously and to what he contained. Sasuke finally spoke up moving ever so slightly in front of his brother. Yes I am aware that he was once Uzumaki Naruto and is the container of the QB. She paused for a moment, what do you mean contained? Ryu placed his hand on Sasuke's shoulder, he had long ago revealed the truth to his brother and also left it within a very well guarded scroll in the clan history section. What my brother means is that only he, myself and now you will be aware of the fact that the demon QB is not trapped within my seal. Only its chakra and knowledge over anything related to chakra and the ninja and demon ways was sealed. As the Shinigami used in sealing the beast took not only my father's soul with him, but also that of the QB itself. The blonde boy spoke as he searched Kurinai for any form of disgust or hatred. Finding none he decided to wait for her response. She honestly didn't know what to say, but the fact he kept it a secret from the Hokage had to have a reason, as she thought about it longer, she realized that it didn't matter as she never once thought of the boy as a demon in the past. Only to find that he never housed the demon only further infuriated her to the actions of the village. Why haven't you told the Hokage? Because if I did he would inspect the seal and try and alter it to determine if I was telling the truth. If he did that my body wouldn't be able to handle the chakra, even if it has all been purified by the seals. Simply because I have not grown enough to physically handle it. Ryu left out the part of how he planned to use the seal to save the others like him from their burden. He had already placed a few seals over it to be able to absorb other demons and spirits that plagued other jailers. Not to mention that he had yet to fully assimilate the knowledge in the vast ocean of former demonic power. It would destroy him if he had to do so in an instant. Though it was the one reason he still wore the training seal as it severely sped up the process. He would have full assimilation of the QB in a few more months and then he could start hoping to find the others. Alright that makes sense and I will keep the secret. We are a team and I expect you to tell Hinata soon. Not only are we a team but we are friends and even more so family. She paused, it was one of the few phrases that Kakashi uses and was passed down to him from your father. 
Those who disobey the rules are trash, and those who abandon their friends and comrades are worse than trash. She looked between both boys. Now these are from the Hokage, as you already know of your affinities, now these are the exercises to master them. I will be testing Hinata soon and start her on it the same. She passed as the thought came to her. Ryu, you can see Chakra with your eyes, and I know you are aware of everyone on this team's level of reserves and control. Then we all safely use the Kage Bunshin. The boy paused for a moment as he considered it, realizing why she had asked. Sasuke could easily use it now, and he had not taught his brother the skill just yet. Kurinai with the use of the seal was now able to safely use it without damaging herself, and Hinata was easily into that level as well, though no more than two or three at a time. Yes, Hinata could safely use two or three, whereas you and Sosk would be able to do about twenty, before feeling the drain to the point of it not being useful for training. She smiled sadistically, alright so here's the plan. Teach us how to use it, and I will teach Hinata. Then we will make at least one clone each and have them do our D rank missions. Leaving us time to get ourselves up to par with each other so that we don't have to worry too much. It will also give me and us more time to train and hone out skills. She let out a small laugh as she saw the shock on the boys' faces. Three months later, Guten. Gale of Destruction, Peyton. Vanquishing Fire, Suetin. Leviathan's Rage, her and I watched as her team each showed her their jutsu that each of them had created, she was impressed not only by their growth, but by the amount of trust and understanding that each held for each other and herself. Good, now since our clones have taken over our D-ranks, we are now ready to actually work on C-rank missions and put your skills to use. She chuckled as they all high-fived each other. Now go and clean up and meet me at the mission's office. She watched them all vanish from sight, she was glad she had taught them all how to use the shunshin techniques, though it was impressive how each one had put their own twist into it. Rather than using the Kanoha shunshin they each had applied their affinities to it. Well in the case of Sasuke and Ryu they had made several variations, but used them for different reasons. Hinata had left in a splash of water, Sasuke flashed away in a burst of lightning and Ryu well, he seemed to favor leaving via his wind affinity. Herself just chuckled as she disappeared into a burst of fire. Leaving the forest silent in their wake. They all appeared shortly in the mission's office, Hinata wearing something similar to Kurinai, though the genin's wrapping was in ocean blue, and showed off her blossoming figure from all the training with the seals and Anko. She was no longer the shy timid girl, but much like her element was calm until provoked. The two boys arrived together wearing matching outfits. Each had a ninja mesh long sleeve shirt with dark blue muscle shirts over it, black anbu style pants with blue spirals going up the legs, and black fingerless gloves on their opposite hands. The palm of Ryu's glove contained a storage seal for his staff, whereas Sasuke's hips had storage seals for his twin Nadachis. After all the training the boys were as well-rounded as they could be balanced into jutsu, ninjutsu, jinjutsu, and both specializing in a weapon. Whereas Hinata was specialized into jutsu in tandem with the tenshi strength that Naruto had taught her, though she was strong in both nin and jinjutsu, she had yet to find a weapon that would suit her. Gurunai turned to face to Hokage and saw him smiling at her and the team. Team 7 reporting for duty and requesting a C-rank mission. Aruka was the chunin on duty for the mission's office today, and he looked between the team shocked at the change in how they all seemed to behave and looked to Kurinai. He couldn't believe that the Jinjutsu mistress could have pulled this team together like this in only a year, but seeing as they only did 1-2 to two tier rank missions every other day, she had plenty of time, but no one could have conceived of this much change in these three genin. I'm not sure that is wise, as you have just only completed your required level of D-ranks. The Hokage suppressed his chuckle as he listened, Haruka, I have been informed as to their training, and I will vouch for their ability to take on a mission, and I have just the perfect one. He pulled up a scroll and handed it to Kurinai who read it, then passed it to her team for them to look it over. After a moment Ryu handed it back to her with a nod. My team and I will accept the mission. However we request that it be extended to the completion of the bridge itself. After reading the sign language from the team, the Hokage was surprised that she had taught them complete signing, but it would be useful to keep up their ruse of being weak, as they wouldn't have to speak much. Alright, Tazuna-san you may come in, may I present your escort and protection for the duration of the butling of your bridge team 7. The old bridge builder looked at the brats before taking a swig from his bottle, he was going to make a comment about them being only children. After all it was only known to him that this was far more dangerous than an escort, but he couldn't afford hell wave couldn't afford to let them be known right now. I don't know what you consider ninja, but these are just kids. He barely finished what he was saying before a glowing green hand struck him in the chest, forcing all the alcohol in his system to vanish, leaving him with a headache if only for a moment. Now that you are sober, you will not be a liability to your protection to Zuna-san. Ryu had spoke though his voice was forced to remain pleasant. He had never liked drinking or those that drank that much, his memories of his childhood would always bring back the smell of sake to his torture as Naruto. That settled, Team 7 you may leave when you are ready. 
The Hokage smirked at what would happen if Ryu ever ran into Tsunade, which only brought him a heavy heart. Azuna-san if you would meet us as the East Gate in an hour we will be ready to leave. Kurenai spoke as she signaled to her team to meet her in the Smithing District once they were dismissed. With that the whole team shunshined out of the office. Leaving only a stunned Aruka, a very sober Tazuna and a bemused Hokage. Wolf Claw, Armory Smithing District, the whole team appeared outside the store, good, now I have ordered you all a present each for getting this far. It's a congratulations for working so hard and in my opinion surpassing every other gen and team out there. Now come on in. She turned to walk into the store followed by her team. Spying the owner of the store and vice versa he noticed Ryu. Ah Namakis and I see you have returned for your items and brought me more customers. Hiyashigi san laughed. Ah Kurenai san is this your team then? After having spotted Kurenai. The sensei of the team had wondered why Hiyashigi was so familiar with Ryu until she noticed that the boy's weapons were the same as the shops. Each smith had a style that was imparted into the weapons if only a small variation, but it seemed Ryu and Sasuke only shopped here. Hi, I'll be picking up my orders, and I think Kurenai sensei has ordered things for us as well. Ryu replied with a fox-like grin, as if he knew exactly what was going on. The old smith smiled and proceeded to pull up large scroll with Ryu's name on it and tossed it to him with a smile. Then went into the back to pull up four pack of gays and placing them on the counter. Now which one is for which Kurenai? Watching Ryu roll open the scroll exposing several seals with markings indicating what was where, he flashed through a few seals, his fingers glowing blue as he began lifting the seals from the paper and placing them on the inside of his holsters and around his belt, the seals glowing brightly, once they were placed only to dime down into a brighter blue against the black material. Kurenai was stunned as she didn't know what they all were, but it was more so that he was able to remove and transfer seals. She had never heard of that skill before. Coughing brought her attention back to the smith, oh well seeing as you know Ryu fairly well, then the staff should be obvious, the twin set is for Sasuke, and the CH and Birdu are for Hinata. Hiyashigi smiled, knowingly. He had already planned on making the staff for Ryu after the first time they had met years ago, especially knowing the boy's focus, skill, and ability with seals. After all Ryu had developed some of the seals that he used on his weapons. Teaching him how to create summoning seals for weapons so that the owners could recall their weapons though it was a hefty price to place them on one. Just so that they didn't place them on cheap weapons that were the mainstay of his business. Alright then, he began unwrapping the chain blades to reveal dark blue metal links that were obviously chakra conductive metal, they were about 6 feet long, each ending with the last several links being blade edged. There is also a scroll to go with them with some basic care and usage techniques. These aren't weapons used in this country mostly in lighting country. He handed over the weapons and scroll to the lavender eyed girl. The next Bakage were twin blades, both again dark blue, with swirl patterns etched into the blades, making them look almost like liquid themselves. These are obviously twin Nadasi, chakra metal with summoning seals, and a few others, that will make them legendary in time I am sure. He winked at Ryu who just laughed at Sasuke's expression over the new blades. But Ryu here, well after your sensei told me you decided on calling your Tajutsu and staff style the Dorigan no Tsubasa, I figured this with what you have helped out here with that I should test myself. He unwrapped a small rod that looked to be a long dragon of dark blue, with silver etching around the scales. It's got the same shrinking seal as your old one, but I added all the other seals that you gave me as well. Plus I put in that one seal on both yours and Sasuke's blades. Kern and I was surprised and a bit worried about the cost. She didn't think that they would be so high quality of a weapon, but again she seemed to underestimate the depth of Ryu and what he did in his free time. Now, I'll cut you a deal Kurenai, since I knew who these were for, as long as you and your team only shop here for your weapons and supplies, then I'll have the order cost of what I originally told you. She considered this, and noticed that is how Ryu probably got his weapons as well, and considering that her team was funding the shop with seals, and probably making a small bit of money from it anyway she agreed as half of 2000, Raya would be a nice price, since she got more than she bargained for yet again. Deal, you got that only buying from the wolf claw. I catch you with weapons bought elsewhere. She left the threat hanging, as they all knew it would be personalized training with Anko. As one the team shuddered. Good, but we have to leave to meet without client. I hope you are all stocked up. Sasuke and Ryu nodded, as they placed their new weapons where their older ones were, placing those in a storage scroll. No sense in wasting them since they may have children to pass them on to one day. Hinata had finished trapping her chains as the scroll had shown, and activating the locking seal on them that kept them attached to her body. East Gate, the team arrived, with a bit more than they were last seen with, each of them minus Ryu seemed to have their holsters filled with shuriken and kunai. 
To the naked eye it seemed that Ryu wasn't wearing any weapons, but the team had long since found out that with him being well on his way to being a seal master, and with that natural fox-like ingenuity that he seemed to possess that he didn't have need to have his weapons exposed, and with all the seals on his armor and what were hidden even under that as Anko had found out one day that Ryu had summoning seals on his underwear for weapons. They collected their client and with one last look at the village, the team and Tazuna left the safety and confines of Kanoha and entered into the woods surrounding the village on the road to Wave. Several hours had passed, and one sober Tazuna watched the children that were hired to protect him move and flow around him in a seamless fashion, he admitted that he was impressed. They didn't complain or argue hell they didn't even seem to talk outside of answering a few questions here or there. It was a bit unnerving to see children like this, but maybe there was a glimmer of hope for them. So Tazuna said what is Wave like? Ryu had asked, he was curious as to what they would be dealing with and had already got the go-ahead from Kurinai to ask the man about it. Well, it was once a prospering land, with the ocean and our closeness to several other nations we dealt in trade and had protection from them, since we held their economies together. He sighed, but a few years ago an evil man came in and started buying everything, closing us off from the rest of the nations. We are poor and poverty-stricken. Most of us can barely afford to feed ourselves let alone out families. He sighed, he hated being sober for this reason, but he was afraid the kid would hit him with that sobering thing again. It's why I am building the bridge, so we can be connected to the mainland again and get out from under Gato's control. Ryu nodded and gave his team a look that went unnoticed even by Kurinai. They all nodded to the look. No matter what they were going to fix the problem and help them, even if it was outside of what they were told to do. The small puddle caught their attention the next moment. It was summer and hadn't rained in a few weeks, all three activated their eyes, not needing seals or even to say it as a focus. The spied the tune in laying in wait. Ryu nodded to Sasuke, who flashed through hand seals, Raiden. Shinjiki no Kangoku lighting surged from Sasuke's hand and surround the puddle, sending up several columns of energy that surrounded it. Dispelling the henge the missing nin were using, revealing them to be ex Nin. You're the demon brothers. Kurinai stated, after seeing their gauntlets and their headbands. She watched as Sasuke closed the electric cage around them, making it touch them and sending waves of energy through them. Why are you here? We're here for the old man Gato wants him dead. One of them spoke while the other smacked him upside the head. Shut up. Ryu had disappeared only to reveal two hands coming up from under the two Kiri Nin and pulling them into the ground. Before he himself popped up between their heads, then deftly wedged two Senban in their necks. Move your heads too much, and that will sever your spinal cord, without a hand seal he summoned a Kagbunshin that shunshined to the village. He's going to alert the Anbu of their pickup and tell the Hokage so that we get the bingo price. She was pleased with her team, not even killing them or really having to fight much, it was a statement to their skills, though she feared when they would have to make their first kill. If this had been another team this would be beyond their skills, but she had faith in her team and the look of determination in their eyes showed they wouldn't be backing out now. Azuna-san, would you care to explain how a C-ranked mission meaning bandits and thieves translates to us finding other ninja after you? The old man wished he could lie, but seeing how they had saved him couldn't do so, as I told you my country is poor because of Gato. He is going to no ends to stop the bridge, and we couldn't afford anything higher. She nodded looking to the team, then be glad you got our team, and I am sure once the bridge is completed your country will of course pay the difference in mission rankings. As of now this is a B-ranked mission, though it may become an A-rank. I trust you are all aware of what this means and you are still prepared to go forward. Each Jenin nodded. After the encounter of the Demon Brothers, Team 7 discovered a little more about their mission and resolved even harder to help the struggling nation and its people. Hinata simply because she couldn't tolerate suffering of innocent people and Ryu and Sasuke because it was one step further into being able to prove themselves and to uphold their ideals. Gurunai was happy with her team and though she was wary about what may come on this mission she knew they could weather it together. As they were walking towards the boat that would sneak them back into Wave, the Hyuga heiress finally spoke up on something that had been niggling away inside of her, Ryu kun Sasuke-kun. I want to thank you both for helping me. I understand that what my clan has said was wrong about me and about both of you. She blushed, oh no I also want to tell you that I know who you are Ryu, I am sorry that I haven't said anything, but I have known since you first came back. Ryu paused, mid-step at the last line. She knew. But then the Hyuga if they watched him enough as a child could have noticed the chakra and the seal. Hinita-chan you watched me when I was younger didn't you? It all made sense how he was saved frequently at the last minute. She always had guards when she walked through the city and it made sense that she in her gentle nature would try and help him. She nodded, yes, when you came back with Nira Nai-chan I made her tell me because I saw you. She blushed even more as she looked at Sasuke. And I am glad that you both have family now. Ano, Sasuke, I don't know how you truly feel about Itachi-san. 
but I have overheard things from the elders in my clan, and I don't know which is worse. But remember being a shinobi means to look underneath the underneath. She softly hugged both stunned boys and kissed them both on the cheeks. Sasuke was struck dumb as he listened to it all fearing for Ryu being hurt because of his past, but when she brought up Itachi, he froze. She was saying there was something more to him killing the clan. What else could there be? He tried to remember, his father was always talking about how he should be Hokage, and how Saratobi had become weak and was betraying the village by not appointing someone stronger. Maybe that was it. But what else? Ryu was looking between them both his mind flying at a thousand miles a minute. Until several things clicked into place. Most of his injuries as a child had been fire-based, the times he spent in the Hokage's office, maybe they found out about him being hidden away and tried to confront the Hokage about it. No, they were going to kill him and take over. They used to be the police. Maybe Itachi was saving the village or working under orders of someone else to prevent it. Several days later, after the revelation between the team they had once more grown closer, even Kurinai after overhearing the conversation between them had been closer to them all, now that they all knew and accepted everything. This is what family is she sighed in another realization that she could never have children on her own. They had just recently arrived on the land of wave after the boat had dropped them off, when all four of them tensed, before grabbing the old man and dropping to the ground as a large sword flung through where they once were. I see so it's the mistress of illusions leading a group of snot-nosed brats, a man's voice spoke before he appeared on the flat of the sword's blade, his bald head and blue-tinged skin, giving away a little as to whom he was, but it was the wrappings over his lower face and the scar across his eye that revealed the most. Lamachi's Abusa, Demon of the Mist. Kurinai spoke as she dropped into stance, Hinata activating her eyes and shielding the bridge builder as Sasuke and Ryu both came up on either side of their sensei swords and staff in hand. Give up the old man and I'll let you and the babies leave. He hopped from his sword and pulled it from the tree with one hand. Walking towards them he looked over the two boys on either side of the woman, seeing the strange pattern in their eyes. Aw oh, if it isn't the proud bloodlines of Kanoha. Pampered and treated like royalty all because you were born with a trait. He spit at them, you know nothing of being a ninja and rely on your weak skills and tricks. Ryu and Sasuke lowered into their stances, both were their weapons version of the dragon's wing style. Before launching themselves at the missing nin, rising dragon wing, dragon tail slam both boys called out their individual attacks as Sasuke brought his blades up in an X before dispersing the chakra from the weapon's jutsu, creating an illusory image of dragon's wings from his blade as they struck the large sword that blocked the attack as Ryu launched himself over Sasuke's back his own staff, giving the same visual of a dragon's tail as he let loose a blast of wind chakra behind it. Both attacks slamming into the Zambado at the same time, each leaving its mark as Sasuke's was filled with lighting and Ryu's gouged into the metal with his wind attack. Zabuza was pushed back by the force of the attack from the two midgets, I've never fought this style. It's the same but with different weapons. He thought as he was suddenly wrapped up in vines and the sky darkened. He cursed himself. Kurinai took the distraction to cast her Jinjutsu on him, right as Ryu looked back at her, he caught the sequence and began one of his own. Maokuten Piasu Tsuru Cage I causing real vines to rise up from the ground and ensnares Abusa. Just as he tried to dispel the Jinjutsu. He tried to move finding himself still trapped in string vines. I dispelled it, how? He looked at the Jounin and then saw the blonde boy holding a seal. Just as two chains shot past the boy's head piercing his shoulders. Arg he looked down to see the sharp blades leading to the small girl that was with the team. If this is anything like the rest of their village I may just join them. But it's a pity I still have to kill the old man. Zabuza Mamachi you are captured, you will be handed over to Kanoha and then return to Kiri. Kurinai spoke just moments before two needles struck the man in the neck, causing him to go limp as a younger nin in a hunter's mask dropped from the trees. I would like to thank you for the assist in capturing this fugitive. Now I will remove the corpse and return to Kiri. The hunter nin spoke softly as they grabbed the body and vanished. Leaving Team 7 stunned but relieved. That was until Ryu spoke up. Kurinai sensei. Hunter nin decapitate and destroy the body on sight. Also from what I noticed those needles were presser point only. Meaning a false death state. Ryu looked towards her seeing the knot and dawn of comprehension. How long? She asked, she didn't know herself her knowledge of medicine extended as far as how to put on a band-aid or wrap a wound. Even the injury from Hinata-chan and the damage to the nervous system from the false death. I would say a week to two weeks depending on how adept anyone around him is at medical treatments. He spoke up after thinking for a moment, a week at the earliest, arriving at Tazuna's, the team arrived in the village and entered Tazuna's home to find his daughter and grandson sitting in the living room. I'm home. And I brought some ninja to help. He smiled at his daughter as she noticed that he was sober. Running to hug him she looked over the team and its leader. Thank you for agreeing to help my father. It means so much to us. 
Raiu looked between them, we are also going to be helping around town. People shouldn't have to suffer like this. He spoke with a vindication that the chorus us of high from both Hinata and Sasuke only sealed the deal. You don't have to, but we will appreciate all the help. Tsunami finished, now there are two guest rooms upstairs that you will be using, and dinner will be ready shortly. The team headed up to the rooms to rest and freshen up for a moment, now, I'll guard Tazuna for the week, will you three help out around town, Ryu I know you will either start a clinic or help out, Hinata I would like you to collect herbs and help with making salves, as well as perhaps start a kitchen for those who can't afford to eat. Turning to Sasuke, you can't spend the week working on your dotan manipulation and help repair homes and maybe fix their wall. The three nodded before they split up to wash off the dirt and grime of traveling and fighting. Three days later, Ryu had taken over one of the small inns in the village and immediately spent hours between himself and his clones, working on all the ill and injured. The smile never leaving his faces. Hinata and Tsunami would bring him meals and the clean bandages that they made, along with the ointments and salves that they both worked on. The sounds and vibrations of the earth shifting would echo throughout the days as Sasuke helped either shape the stones for the bridge or repaired homes with himself and his clones, working each day into exosution, but with a happy smile on his face. Anada between working on the salves and helping prepare the supplies for medical needs, she and her few clones she could make ran a soup kitchen after having the village bring all the food they had to her. She had began working in everything so that they all could have something to eat. The three young ninja brought the village hope and a small amount of happiness in the week that they had spent there so far. Even Kurunai as she worked alongside the workers on the bridge, handing planks, stone or nails when needed. But so far she found there was a life coming back to the small town in Wave and perhaps it would spread to the country as well. After the end of the day all four found themselves sitting around Tazuna's table relaxing with a bit of a snack and some tea. I'm proud of you three and I am sure the Hokage will be as well once this is over and has read the reports. Kurunai smiled at her tired team. Well, I have been training two of the villagers to run the clinic after we leave, and between Hinata-chan and I, we are leaving scrolls on medicines that can be made here. Ryu spoke up after a sip. Ah no, I am also teaching several of the kids our age how to cook and run the soup kitchen. Hinata smiled. This is what she became a ninja for. Not for the fighting or the battles, but for the chance to help and make a difference for people who need the help. Sasuke yawned, at the rate I am going we can make two bridges and my reserves will be larger than Ryu's. He laughed and so did the others. But honestly I should have the base wall finished in a few days since I seem to have mastered the Doton. Yi Kai no cave. The walls are 6 feet thick and about 12 feet high. That was about a fourth of the size of Kanoha's walls, but this wasn't a ninja village. Two more days and I'll have the village done, then another two patching and strengthening and it should be solid. Good, Kurunai smiled and so did Tazuna and his daughter. They had been the most surprised at the kindness and generosity that the young ninja had shown. Then again the true surprise came at their level of skill and how they handled themselves. Finish the wall, and then you can have a day off, Hinata I am sure between the village and those you have taught you can take some time off as well. Kurunai sighed as she looked to Ryu, there wasn't really a way for him to rest completely. Ryu, you will still have to send clones to the clinic every so often, but I am sure you can use the time off as well. The team nodded looking forward to a day off from all the work, even if it was for a good cause they were still young and were burning themselves out. Strangely they could almost hear the voice of a green glad ninja utter the flames of youth on the winds. All in the room seemed to shudder. On the seventh day, they were resting, well resting as much as this team seemed to do anyways. They had all turned the day into a training day along the river outside the village. The boys had secretly worked their doton skills around the outside of the village by working the tunnels many feet below the ground from the riverbed into the now walled town so that the water would spring up in the small ponds that they had worked throughout the town. For either freshwater or for working gardens, since at night Ryu had been sneaking out and using his Mauchuan training to bring life to the town in the ways of plants and trees. It had been a great training for him to familiarize himself with all the plants and trees that seemed to grow here, as well as his many outings to collect the seeds and starters for all the plants. Ryu had realized that it was less training if he had the plants or seeds to work with, though that was only for raw focus. Jutsu it was another thing entirely, but the seeds did yield to the creation of one jutsu that he would only use if death was the only way. But that's where we find Ryu now, several yards away from a napping Sasuke and a sunbathing Hayuga. The blonde walked through the forest with several pouches as he looked over the plants and coaxed out the seeds. A dark-haired girl was seen picking at the herbs, and it was one he had yet to meet. Excuse me, perhaps I could help he asked, noticing that they were healing herbs. The girl looked up from her work noticing it was one of the ninja that had fought Zabuza-sama. Perhaps if you want. Are you a ninja? The girl asked Ryu, who only smiled. 
yay, I'm here with my team to help Wave, so they don't have to suffer anymore from Gato's trying to sell them as slaves and starving them to death. His blue eyes sparkled with his confidence. Do you have someone precious to you to protect? The girl had asked after a time, of them both filling the basket with herbs. Yay. I have my brother and the old man. Even Hinata-chan and Kurenai-sensei. Those are the closet but I have others. Too. He spoke with a goofy smile. That's good because you can only truly be strong if you have someone to protect. The girl spoke again but this time as she walked away with a smile. My name's Haku, and I'm a boy. Ryu's jaw dropped to the ground, figuratively as the girl. No boy corrected his assumptions. He had never seen someone so graceful or even attractive, yet it was a boy. He was dumbfounded. Well tells Abusa to get better. He shunshined out as a senban stuck into the tree he was standing in front of. It's a shame we could not have met under other circumstances. I will try not to kill your precious people. With that the boy disappeared into the woods. A few days later, Sasuke had decided to make the bridge into part of the town and had extended the walls from the gates all the way to the bridge. Leaving plenty of space on either side for homes or even vendors and future businesses. He had thought if someone could cut the town from the bridge, then it wouldn't be a good thing. The Hards party realized was helping the villagers install the gates, since they were the main city on this side of Wave, they had three roads leading out of the town and had to put four gates up one for the new bridge and three for the other roads. Between him and the few spare carpenters in the city they also worked in towers that were on the inner walls so that they could patrol the tops of the walls. Which is why Sasuke was left to sleep in as the other headed to the bridge, since today was the day that Ryu had figured Zabuza would be ready to show up if his meeting with Haku was anything to go by. Well it looks like another month and the bridge will be finished, Tazuna said as they walked up to the bridge, only to find it deserted. Where is everyone? Ryu and Hinata both activated their respective dejutsu, Hinata gasping as she could see the wokers were locked up on boats. Both could see the chakra in the mist that was starting to roll in. The small sound of metal hitting the stone work of the bridge as Ibuza and Haku appeared from the mist. Looks like we meet again, Haku take care of the blonde, the mistress here has a little business with me. They looked at the team seeing that Hinata had already stepped back to protect Izuna. Just as Ryu charged at the male apprentice of Zabuza forcing them off to one side of the bridge as Kurunai launched herself at Zabuza. Knowing that the only way to survive was to keep him from using that sword. Ryu and Haku were trading hits, he had never found someone that could dodge most if not all of his strikes. This boy was a few years older than him and it amazed him at how agile and flexible he was. But on the other hand Ryu was dodging most every strike as well. It was near standstill until Haku caught one of his punches, it saddens me to fight you, but I must to protect Zabuza Sama. The boy the flash threw one-handed seals, which shocked Ryu even as his mind started to process the potential and began creating a way to do it as well. Hide. Demonic ice mirrors as several mirrors formed and created a dome around them. Haku released a hand and jumped into the mirror cast images of himself around to all of them. I will make this swift. Ryu was shocked as he felt the senban strike him from all angles, not even seeing Haku appear from the mirrors. He struggled and blocked as many as he could, seeing after images. The thought dawning on him as he realized that the jutsu allowed the boy to move too fast for even his kagigan to predict movements. Fast enough to intercept them. Even if he could at least block them. You don't have to fight me, Gato is an evil person. We could stop this and save the village. Why? The boy in the mirror spoke, because it is Abusa Sama wished to retake Kiri and end the wars, to do so, he needs the money that Gato is paying him. The boy leapt out of the mirror before Ryu, both boys slicing into each other covering the other in blood their owner the others. Naruto froze as his felt the chakra within his seal start to boil and lash out through his skin, pulling the blood into his body. Forcing the bloodline to fuse with him making it stronger, twisting his coils his chakra his mind to adapt to the, the new power. He let out a scream of pain as his body started to convulse. With Kurunai, the two Jounin were clashing kunai to sword as the both danced across the bridge, the clash of metal, and the sparks were all they could see as they were forcing each other around. The smooth surface of the stone coated in the moisture from the mist making them slide with each thrust, every swing and parry of the other's attacks. They're strong for a woman, Zabuza spoke as they clashed once more before both leaped back. It's not because I am a woman, I worked hard to get to this level, and I am still working to get stronger. She spoke as she threw out a wave of shuriken with her free hand, was the mist or struck the sword he used. She started casting a jinjutsu, but instead of personally latching it into his system like so many, she latched it into the mist. Forcing him to power it as he kept up the mist. Once it settled she started dodging around him to get behind him. Right as she was about to strike him his sword came around to block. Your jinjutsu won't work on me in the mist, I don't have to see you to hit you. I was trained in Kiri, we use out other senses to fight. He spoke as he pushed her off the blade sliding back into his stance before rushing at her again, the sparks of the sword striking the edge of her kunai. 
he wouldn't lose to her, even if she fraught with a spirit much like his own. Fierson determined. Debuza was sure if he had met her outside of this he might have tried to court her, but for now she was his enemy. But Sasuke, he woke up feeling the sun hitting his face, shit I'm late. He rushed to get dressed as he made his way down the stairs, he heard a small crash from the kitchen he moved into the room to see Tsunami being held by one of Gato's men and tried to figure out how Hei got into the town. Move and your mom dies brat. That's when he saw Inari holding a butcher knife from the counter. Twitch and then rush at the man. Sasuke quickly replaced himself with Inari and lunged his sword into the man's head, the body going limp as he pulled her from the now dead man's grasp. She hugged him, then ran to her son. Thank you. She wept out. Sasuke turned to look at them, thanks Inari. If you hadn't tried to save your mom and distract him. I wouldn't have been able to help. He looked at the door as he realized that if they were here then the bridge was being attacked. Stay safe and go find some of the other villagers and stay with them. I have to go help my brother and the others. Taking off out the door the wind whipping where he had once stood. He ran to the bridge to find it covered in mist and saw Izuna and Hinata standing with their back to the wall. Looking further with his Kagigan, he could see Kurinai and Zabuza fighting, turning he saw Haku and Ryu clash, and then Ryu start to scream as he fell to the ground. Sasuke rushed into the dome without thought, seeing his brother on the ground not moving. He turned to look at the boy in the mirrors. You will wish you had never killed my brother. The Kagigan began to spin wildly as he started flashing through hand signs, Raiden. Ryu and In both watched as a large dragon of lightning flew from Sasuke's arm and started to crash into the mirrors bouncing from each one until it cracked and destroyed a mirror, causing the jutsu to break. Aku falling to the ground on top of Ryu. That's when he felt it, the small pulse in an otherwise still body, he's alive. The boy coughed as the exhaustion from the charka wore on him, looking into the spinning blue and black eyes of Sasuke as he noted the boy was holding a final seal in his hands. As they looked upon each other, the mist faded dispelled by the lack of chakra to support it. Haku could see Zabuza on his knees looking at the woman that held a kunai to his throat. No. Haku screamed out as he pushed the last of his chakra into his body, pushing Zabuza out of the way ending with the kunai piercing him. Good, I can just have them kill you all off now. Those who were conscious looked to see a fat man surrounded by goons. And I don't have to pay you either. He chuckled as he motioned for the men to start the attack. The waves of men leapt and climbed from the boats as he stood on the end of the unfinished bridge to enjoy the saving of money. Zabuza looked to the nearly dead Haku, then to Kurinai. If we live. I want to take you on a date. He forced himself up and charged at the mercs, just as Sasuke started flinging Jutsu down upon them. Kurinai smiled for some reason as she too joined the fray. The blood and dead bodies covered the bridge as the last of the thugs were cut down, the three nin were bleeding and hurt as they looked at Gato. Just as they were ready to strike an arrow passed between them sticking out of the man's throat as he gurgled and collapsed onto the ground, his life fleeing from the wound. Turning, they saw the village behind the men Inari standing with a boy in his hand. This is our village. Then the villagers came and started collecting Ryu and Haku taking them into the clinic as the rest began the arduous task of removing the bodies and collecting all the weapons and armor. Several days later, Ryu had woken up to find himself inside his mindscape once more. Mindscape, he looked around as his mother once more appeared, as she had done years ago and not since. I'm afraid this is the last time I'll be showing up Naruto-kun. She held him, as they both hugged each other. I just want you to be careful around bloodline users, it's the QB skill that you have picked up that knocked you out. He looked at her curiously, what do you mean skill I thought all I had was the chakra and the knowledge. No, you have that, but each demon or spirit has a unique ability that becomes part of its hosts. She explained as she cradled her son for maybe the last time until he passes on to join them in death. The QB had the ability to absorb bloodlines and techniques, it's how you have so many affinities. Just like you absorbed Tenzo's Makuten. Though you were unconscious when that happened. She pointed to the dragons that had come to represent his elemental skill. That Haku boy had an ice bloodline. Now you have it, but it's stronger. Just like everything you have absorbed this way. It's how the QB had become the most feared of the Biju. Ryu nodded as he could feel the power of ice within him, not only as a bloodline now, but stronger because of his matching affinities. Does this mean that any time I get blood from someone with a bloodline that I will take it? No, only a bloodline that won't affect what you already have. Just like you can't have another Jujutsu, but elemental bloodlines yes, however there are other bloodlines that you should look out for because they are deadly unless you are supposed to have them, but I think you will be fine. Just promise me to stay away from the Kagaya bloodline. It might actually kill you if you take it in. She spoke with a tear in her eyes. You have made me proud, and I have put all the knowledge from Yuzu that I possessed in your mental library. Trust Kurinai and that seal for summoning that you are working on. We'll work use it and become the best ninja you can. I will always love you and be proud of you. 
She leaned down to kiss her boy on the forehead, and just as her lips touched she faded, the power in her seal now gone. Just as the training seal on him flashed in a bright white before becoming nothing more than dust on his forehead to be blown away by the wind. He could feel the injuries to his body as he walked into the tower, to see a massive wall of blue with a Uzumaki swirl over the books, before he went through them placing them on the shelves, watching them fade from the powerful glowing blue into the traditional colors of his mind, as he sorted them one by one, as his bodily injuries healed. Outside, Team 7 plus Abusa sat next to the beds of both Ryu and Haku, watching as the few clones that remained worked on healing them, as they dispersed back to their master, as they wore out their supply of chakra. They watched as the seal in his forehead became visible and flashed leaving what appeared to be very dried blood in its shape. If that happened, then he has full control over his chakra. Sasuke stated, with a smile, knowing that his brother was going to live, seeing that. Team 7 looked to see Ryu start to glow as his chakra started to pulse in warm waves from his body as they watched him heal before their eyes, even then the aura seemed to cover them, and they too felt the relaxing touch of healing. He opened his eyes, I feel like I just got ran over by Lee and Gi-sensei. Ryu chuckled but felt the pure freedom from the chakra seal, amazed out how light and free he actually felt from it, though he could see the slight blow of his chakra, which he reined back in, until he couldn't see it outside of his body anymore. I'm going back to sleep wake me when it's over. Before his eyes closed and everyone seemed to laugh. Five weeks have passed since the Battle of the Bridge, well that's what the villagers of the newly renamed village of Nami no Ryu in the Land of Waves called it. Between the work on the bridge, the asses taken from Gato's hideouts and the massive work done by Team 7, the village was more than just that. It became the trade center it once was. The Land of Wave brought people in to help with the project, the seaport was expanded, and Tazuna, the newly appointed daimyo of the country, had made great leaps and bounds. Though it was still a far cry from its former glory, but it was on its way up. As the villagers waved and smiled at the genin as they made their way through town. Ryu and Haku had worked hard and turned the old inn into an actual hospital for the village, having several trained medics now, though none were med nins, but it was the best they could do in a month. The Saz K wall was finished and even improved upon from its crude jutsu-based form, with the help of several new contractors. Even Hinata's refuge had grown since then being given a full-time staff and became the new halfway home and orphanage under Tsunami's control. All in all the everyone was amazed by the progress a few teenagers could accomplish in the town. Even Zabuza had found a calling for his time in the village, he had started training the daimyo's new bodyguards, as well as a police force. To say they looked the part was far from it. Most of the time they could be seen going to or coming from the hospital. Though they may not be able to take him down they had learned quite a bit from him, and even the retired samurai that once Phil Wave had started to come back and pick up the way of the sword once more. But as all things they must come to an end, which is where Team 7's Abusa and Haku could be found now, standing in fire country as they watched the last stone of the bridge settle into place. What no one saw however were the 50 Ryu clones scampering under the bridge placing seals. Different ones for strengthening, and others for repair, and several others that would only trigger with key things happening on the bridge, he had Al replaced the same seals around the wall and throughout the village. Needless to say among all those that would be venturing to Kanoha the blonde looked the most exhausted. Ryu, you look tired. Hinata asked as she looked at him worriedly. She had noticed how he had been wearing himself out since the bridge, either working or studying. I'll be fine Hinata-chan this is the good kind of tired. Besides we have the soon-to-be demon swordsman of Konoha to protect us. He chuckled as did everyone else. But cheers and farewells they left the land, knowing that it was much better than they had left it. Also with the documents to open up trading between fire country and the land of waves, plus the expected mission pay for the sea turned A rank mission. Then of course the village had paid them all for their work with their individual operations. Ryu for his founding and training of the hospital, Sasuke for his work on the village itself, Hinata for her work with the hospital and the shelter and Zabuza and Haku for their work with the hospital and the training of the village police as well. Four clones sat under the bridge waiting as the listen for the villagers to decide on the bridge's name. So what should we name the bridge dad? The old man thought for a while, will I take it to Great Tazuna Bridge as a no? Looking as everyone just laughed and shook their head at him. Then I guess we should call it the Great Dragon Bridge. He smiled, and the two gates shall be the Ryu and Sasuke gates. And the four supports can be named after the others. The crews went to work building the placards, but everyone stopped when they heard the echoes of a boy yelling out, and four stone dragons seemed to fly from the ends of the bridge and wrapped up and around the supports all four heads resting on the center cross support of the bridge. Then they began to glow as the clones all placed similar seals on the dragons. Only time might tell what they were for. Hinoha, the two days it took for them to return had been uneventful minus Ryu telling everyone what they had done with the bridge. But now we find the five shinobi standing in front of the Hokage. So, you are telling me that these reports are accurate. 
the old man spoke, as he held not only Kurinai's written report, but a report written and sealed by the wave daimyo himself about what occurred in that village. Yes, Hogujama. They all chimed, it was a little much to take in, but then he looked at whom he was speaking about. Ryu had been trained by himself and many others in their respected fields, and well Ryu passed that training on to his team. Very well, I will see that your mission payment is placed into your accounts, as well as the additional payments that were sent with you. He sighed but felt slightly younger, knowing that maybe there was hope for the future and the will of fire. We will also start sending medic teams in two-month intervals to continue supporting and training in your hospital Ryu-kun. The old man laughed seeing the blonde blush slightly. Turning to look at the two they had brought with them, as for you two I will extend probationary shinobi licenses to you and instate Zabuza as a Jounin. Haku, from what I have been led to believe we will place you as a Chunin and instate you primarily at the hospital as a medic. Looking to them all he read Ryu's fingers. Stay at my place till enough to get on. He smiled, as for living arrangements, one of our clans has offered you sanctuary until you are able to afford your own places. He chuckled seeing the dumbfounded looks on the two nins' faces. Ryu and Sasuke can show you to where you will be staying. Zabuza I would like you to report here tomorrow for some missions and to get to know your fellow Jounin. Haku just follow Ryu tomorrow as he will be your supervisor at the hospital. He dismissed the team and the two newly appointed Kanoha nins. Watching them leave he let out a sigh. The kid's nothing like I thought he would be sensei. A strange white-haired man with red facial markings appeared in the window. Looking at the Hokage for an answer. Tell me Jureya have you found anything about the Namaka's clan that was destroyed a few years ago? Saratobi smiled to himself before turning to look at one of his students. No, it's strange it's like the never even existed. He paused looking to his once teacher. You don't mean to tell me that kid is Minato's son. The Hokage just laughed, he's starting to look like him isn't he? The man motioned for the toad sage to get out of the window and take a seat. I would expect that you are planning on apprenticing him at some point. Maybe, depends on how the fox's chakra is acting up. Oh it never has, and I need you to continue his seal training. I was never as good as you were Minato-kun, and he's already learned everything I can teach him in that aspect. The Hokage laughed heartedly at the gapping look his former student gave him. The boy's only 13 how long have you been training him? And on top of that what else should I know? Since he looked awfully chummy with the Ichiha kid. Sadly it seemed for our illustrious pervert and spy extraordinaire that he has been out of the loop for too many years when it comes to his home village. Well let me fill you in, and you might want to grab him before Tsuna Day finds out about him. The Hokage chuckled as he began the long tale of the transformation of Naruto to Ryu Namikas. Time is fleeting, many months had passed since their first mission outside the village of Konoha, and life has moved on from that moment, though in many ways had changed. Team 7 still remained close as Sasuke and Hinata seemed to grow closer, Kurinai had taken Zabuza up on the offer of a date and have been together ever since. Yet, that is not the matter at hand as we see our team of shinobi settle down in training area 44, each with scrolls and their sensei and two unofficial ones, Zabuza and Anko, sitting nearby. Now, as you know it's time for the Chunin selection exams, and I have nominated you all for promotion. Kurinai spoke as she watched them look up from the scrolls they were studying. Not that you need them to prove you are Chunin, but the pair A's and the fancy vests are a bonus na. She chuckled. Sensei, Amurayu um, found out about your problem. And well, Hinata spoke up as Ryu shot her a look before he chose to finish. What Hinata-chan is saying is that we all have come to consider you like our mother. And I have come up with a seal that will allow you to have kids. He offered her the scroll with all the information on it, though it had not been him alone, and was mostly from the Uzumaki scrolls he had managed to summon. Flashback. Well Sasuke, I finally figured out how to get all the scrolls from any clans I am related to. Ryu spoke after finishing the seal pattering in the library floor, wiping the sweat from his brow. That's good right, I mean it's not like you would be stealing them, so go ahead, after all it's our clan scrolls anyhow. Sasuke said looking up from one of the few scrolls that he hadn't had time to read on control exercises for elemental training. Beside they wouldn't know where to find them if you did. The both laughed for a while as Ryu focused on activating the summoning seal. The library filled with smoke as more than they though appeared there. Stacks of armor, weapons, and scrolls filled the area. Ryu staggered as he felt the massive drain on his chakra. Sasuke leapt up to catch him, are you alright? The yeah, I'm just guessing some of this stuff was sealed or behind barriers, or it wouldn't have taken most of my chakra to do this. He took a seat and a deep breath. As he felt a shiver go down his spine, as if several people throughout the nations cursed him at once. Two of which he would meet face to face one day soon. The rest I'll make the clones and have them sort through everything. Before he noticed one of the scrolls roll off the pile, the seal of the six path sage resting on its cover. Ryu. Naruto. I think you should see this. And flashback, her and I had taken the scroll and looked it over. She had limited understanding in how to create seals, but she could discern their purpose as well enough. 
if i am reading this right i just won't be able to use any chakra while i am pregnant Ryu nodded and looked between Zabuza and Kurinai, delivering a strong message to the older man, hurt her, and you will die. Yay, plus you should only need it the first time, as it should repair the damage to the organs. While well, it's being used. She dropped the scroll and grabbed all three of her team into a huge hug, even Anko shed a tear for her friend, knowing that was the one thing that had always been denied her, since she became a ninja. Now, you three take the day off and do whatever it is you want. Just meet at the academy in room 301 by 10am tomorrow. She spoke through tears, as she wouldn't be able to do anything for the rest of the day. But she would be taking the seal to the Hoka gate to have him look it over. But even the chance and along with the fact that they thought of her like a mother, and they were trying to give her the chance to truly be one, was a gift that no woman could withstand. Later that day, Ryu and Haku were walking back from the hospital when they heard the sound of a kid crying out for help. Both of which rounded the corner to see Kanohamaru being held by his scarf in the air, by what appeared to be a guy in a cat suit. Hey, put him down. Make me, the little brat deserves it for running into me. Perhaps, you didn't hear me, put the Hokage's grandson down now. Or I will make sure you end up in wooden box to be sent home to your family. Ryu spoke coolly as his eyes swirled into the active Kagegan. Henkuro, you're a disgrace. Release him. A voice spoke from the shadows until a swirl of sand appeared leaving a red-headed kid that looked like he either wore too much eyeliner or hadn't slept in years. The cat suit dropped the kid, who ran behind Ryu, thanks boss. You're from Suna, I am assuming here for the exams. Ryu spoke looking between the three from the desert, as Haku looked over and then left with the young Siratobi. Yes, we are. Though I am curious about you. What is your name? Namak is Ryu, and you would be. Tsubuka no Gara, Kankuro and Tamari. The ready replied indicating each of them I look forward to seeing you in the exams Namak is. So does mother. Ryu twitched, as he felt he seal trying to pull something. It was then that he realized that the other boy was a jailer, and out of reflex his hands flashed seals, Kinsar Edish, Jin no Tenzum, seal prison transfer, his fingers glowing blue as the slammed into Gara's abdomen. Before pulling back and placing his hand onto his own seal causing it to spin rapidly, a vortex of solid blue chakra passed between them, a brown ball was sucked out of Gara and into Ryu's seal before it finished. The two siblings stood by transfixed, almost as if some presence was keeping them from interfering. Maybe it was their own fear as seeing another person attack Gara, and that Gara would kill them, but nothing seemed to happen, until the light stopped leaving both boys to stand there Ryu with a smile on his face, as he leaned in a whipsard, you are free. Though they didn't hear what was said, but saw the smile on Gara's face before he closed his eyes and started snoring. Damari began to freak out, shit, we can't let him sleep it will come out again. Ryu just laughed, let him rest. I have removed his burden from him. You have your brother back now. Remember this moment when the time comes. Then in a swirl of sand he left. Leaving two very stunned ninja behind and one sleeping peacefully for the first time in his life. The swirl of sand deposited Ryu in the training grounds of his home, as his tight grip on his control finally slipped the chakra blurring out around him, sending shockwaves along the grass and bending the trees away from his body. The dirt rising from the ground swirling around his body as his eyes shifted from their beautiful blue to a sickly yellow with slits. No. 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 I will not let you win, you are mine to destroy. The young boy's voice switched between that of his soft timber and that of a raving beast of power as they fought for control over his body. Mindscape, the once beautiful place that was his mind seemed to rage under a storm as Ryu stood on the edge of the ocean of chakra that had at one time belonged to the QB. You will go into the seal demon, as he called out to his elemental dragons, each waking and starting to strike the one-tailed demon Shikaku with their power. I will not bow to a mortal like you. The demon raged as it fought against the blue chains that tried to force the beast into the seal, the dragon striking against the sand creature with a frightening display of power. The Shinigami created this seal to hold and contain the greatest of you demons, you will not win. Ryu began shouting as he started going through seals concentrating on the chakra that swirled beneath the demon, as well as the seals he had placed over the seal, meant to contain a Biju. Upon reaching the last hand seal everything stopped moving, before the tower burst a beam of light into the air, rending the clouds of the storm. I have come, Shikaku. The spirit called out from everywhere yet nowhere at once. The great force of power seemed to weigh heavily upon Ryu inside his mind and outside it as well. You have two choices. You may die and give all that you are to your host. Or you may leave your power and knowledge with him, and I take your soul to be judged by Kami herself. The reaper spoke as he appeared between Ryu and the demon. The demon stilled as he saw the Shinigami, hearing the words echoed throughout the mental landscape of the boy that had ripped him from his host. I would rather die than be judged by some weak excuse of a god. The raccoon-like demon raged as he struggled against its bonds. Then so be it. 
the death god spoke, before he lunged out with his bone hands and ripped the soul from the demon holding it in his hand, he turned to face Ryu before he consumed the soul, letting the boy watch what he was doing. You have started down a path that has been laid before you by those that came before. Know this, Kami has blessed you in ways even I do not comprehend you are the child of a great destiny, you are one of the heirs to the sage of six paths. You who inherited his knowledge and natural skills. You have seven more before you are the heir of his chakra. Seven more members of your family you must contain. The be his true heir you path will be dangerous, and you could give rise to something far more dangerous than the Biju, or you could bring about a time of peace. The gods soon vanished clearing the skies. The once crystal blue ocean of chakra now seemed murky with a tainted brown power. Yet the seal placed over the ocean the one meant to contain and purify Thrump to life and began extracting the chakra and cleansing it. Ryu took in the dragons once more as they lined up again to take their silent watch, fire, earth, air, water, lightning, wood, ice, and now a dragon of shifting sands. But that he took to the tower to find tomes of red and brown littering the floor. Again taking up the task of placing all he had learned to the shelves. Outside, the raging force of his chakra slowed only to start spreading waves of the elements from his body, scorching, soaking, freezing, shocking, growing rending the air and ground before it all settled. Leaving his huddled body in a crater of life and death, those in the village that could remember the night that the nine-tailed demon attacked their village, shuddered in fear, as shinobi began scouring the village and the surrounding areas to see if they could find the source of the foul chakra. But before they could hone in on it, the power simply vanished. The Hokage in his tower peered through his crystal orb, watching Ryu tame another beast it seemed. Though how he could hold two demons he didn't know. With a flash he vanished from his office to appear next to Ryu. Rolling him over he pulled up the boy's shirt to inspect the seal, but his jaw dropped when he saw the changes and most obvious many alterations to the seal. Ryu what have you done? To his surprise the boy answered. I killed another one old man, he laughed dryly as he was tired from the ordeal. What do you mean killed? I never held the QB, just its chakra and skills. Just like I know have the Ichibi's chakra and skills he paused to take a breath and pushed himself up onto his elbows. The seal, when dad used it the Shinigami took the demon soul leaving everything else. Every demon or spirit I can trap in my seal the same thing will happen. He sighed trying not to fall asleep in the mess. Just don't be mad at me. With that he passed out. Tsuritobi had heard many things, seen many things and done many things. But to find out that a boy had discovered how to steal demons from their hosts and then destroy them within his own seal on his body was something he had never heard of nor even imagined to be possible. He sent an Anbu to summon Nira to have her look at him. It was something he had feared for, but he wanted answers. After a few moments she arrived and instantly activated her bioakugan and gasped. Hokage-sama. What happened? Ryu somehow figured out a way to remove Biju and trap them in his seal and through doing so brings the Shinigami back to destroy the soul of the demon. He paused to look at the worried healer. Is there anything wrong with him that you can tell me? She quickly performed a diagnostic jutsu and gasped. It's. He's. Actually perfectly fine except his healing rate is doubled. His metabolism just the same. But it's his chakra pathways that are strange. She looked up at the Hokage with a confused look. They are multiplying and shifting. As you know humans have set pathways that are unique to each person, though they all connect and flow over certain points. They're Tenketsu. She paused. The way his are right now, as they have stabilized I could strike every one of his tinketsu, and it wouldn't shut off the flow of his chakra. It's like he has layers of pathways now some on the surface and others deeper. The Hokage nodded, and after seeing how they had discovered this before, he had assumed that it was how they coped with the added foreign chakra, by making more pathways. But, now it seemed that there was something else to it entirely. Nira-chan this stays out of his records of course, but from what he told me before he passed out. He contains the knowledge, skills, and power of the Biju that he traps this way. He sighed. I need you to get me Anoichi. Inside Ryu's room, Saratobi looked at the arrival of Nira and Anoichi, I'm glad you could come, but something has come to my attention, and I sadly cannot move without knowing. I need you to walk his mind and discover anything unusual. The other man nodded and flashed through the seals for the mind precision slumping over in the chair. Mindscape, Anoichi, arrived among a grassy field, surrounding what looked like a village with people and buildings. The forest away from the down looked forbidding as he turned to see a vast ocean of blue, with a darkness under it. He had never seen a mind like this before, as he passed the people of the town he touched one and got a rush of information about that person. I see so the people are manifestations of his knowledge of them. He looked at the building noting how some were horribly proportioned to others. If the people represent themselves, then the building must be respective abilities or knowledge in those areas. He moved along learning some interesting things about how the Namikaze's mind worked compared to other people. It was amazing and organized, but in a way that you could spend time here in peace meditating. Hey, you're not supposed to be here. 
He heard echo from around him, seeing dragons of different colors and what looked like elements around him. Take him to the boss. He soon found himself brought to the large tower where he saw the boy sitting there with a stack of scrolls and books. He would pick on up look through it before it faded to a wisp and entered the tower or float out into his mental city. Release him and return to your posts. The dragons obeyed and vanished. You must be Yamanaka and then that means that you're Arunoichi. Which means that the old man asked you to pry into my mind since he found me after Ijutsu had some unexpected backlash. The boy spoke as he continued to look through the scrolls. That would be correct, though I am not sure what I was supposed to look for since 1, I have never looked into your mind before, and then 2, I have never seen a mind like yours. The elder man spoke in respect. It was one thing to pry into a mind of the person who was average, but to pry into the mind of someone so mentally disciplined was dangerous. Don't worry I have no intentions of harming you, though I do request you stay out of the forest as those are my more scarred moments as a child and other such negative things. He paused from his scrolls to look up. Jiji really didn't tell you what to look for did he? Anoichi sighed, he hated things like this, but then it was a rare occurrence to truly see a mind like this. No he didn't and I will take you warning though I have to wonder as to what he hoped I would find or not find in here. The blonde boy just chuckled before he touched all the scrolls making them wisp away. He shook his head a moment that is never pleasant. Before he walked forward, well since I know you I am Ryu Namikaze, though I sure you knew that already, but I will show you what he wanted you to look for. Ryu summoned up an orb and tossed it to the man and watched as the memory of the fight with the Ichibi flashed through his mind before the orb vanished. He wanted the truth to see if there were any demons in my seal or if I was a demon hiding I assume. I know why he did it but that doesn't mean I have to like it. His trust in the old man slipped a little even if he understood the reasoning. Anoichi was shocked at how blunt the boy was about all of this, you were the Uzumaki boy. Ryu just nodded. We were told you died. Well technically I did, I was just lucky enough to be brought back to life as just myself. However you will stay here a moment. Ryu then vanished. Boot sighed, old man, you have some explaining to do quickly. Ryu Anoichi spoke. The Hokage looked over to the interrogation specialist that he had come in to look at Ryu speak to him in that tone. What do you mean Anoichi? The man laughed, Jiji. Just because it's his body doesn't mean I didn't jump over here. I just followed the chakra. But that aside you could've just asked me when I woke up, not sent some stranger than hated Naruto into my mind to find out that I am a technical demon vessel damn it. What do you mean technical? And what do you mean he hated Naruto? Well as soon as he found out that I used to be that Uzumaki boy he became hostile towards me, which is why I jumped over here for a moment. The possessed man spoke. But it's simple, instead of sealing the demons inside me the seal just seals their chakra and their skills talents that were respectiveness to them. Their mind or soul is destroyed or taken away. That's why you never felt the QP chakra from me. Dad put a purification seal attached to the seal that merges my chakra and theirs. Well I had the training seal on it sped up the process. He paused finding it harder to breath for a moment. Since I held the largest and strongest, I can easily fit the rest inside without worry of them taking over. Now as long as I do them in order from here on it'll be like dispelling 50 clones at once, small headache, but not of the power wash that happened. I promise. It was strange seeing Anoichi give Ryu's fox-like grin. Alright, Ryu. I'll trust you and I hope you forgive an old man for worrying. I will but it will take time. Or maybe some Raymond, he paused for a moment, actually find me someone that can teach me dad's jutsu and we can call it even. But as far as this guy I'm going to wipe part of his memory. From about the point to where he found me to now. It's my secret and it'll stay that way. With that the body slumped to the floor again. Mindscape Ryu reappeared in front of Inoichi again, I am sorry for leaving, I just had to go yell at the old man for a second, and I am sorry for this. He reached out and grabbed onto Inachi and retraced and removed all the memories up until the point they met. Though he did make a copy of the man perfectly to fit in his mind for later inspections. Releasing him he hopped back. No he didn't tell me what to look for. Inasi he said. Well that's because he didn't know what happened. Just let him know it was something similar to if someone dispelled about 50 Kage Bunshin at once. On top of having chakra exhaustion. I just knocked myself out for a day or so. Hopefully less since I have the Chunin exams tomorrow. The boy sighed before he got a determined look on his face. Well go tell him, I'll be awake in a moment. With a wave of his hand he forced the man out of his mind. And walked over to his pools of chakra that were slowly filling up from the strain. This will never do, he fuck use hard and made the wells larger and much deep, and that included the point from which they seemed to fill from the never-ending ocean. That should fix my issues with depletion, and also I'll regenerate faster too in all senses of the word. Now to wake up. Outside, Ryu came too, just as he saw Nira leaning back away from him. She must have noticed the shift in his chakra happen quickly. He looked at Anoichi and the Hokage, I trust he told you what happened. 
The old man nodded and then dismissed Inoichi. They all waited for the man to leave. Now, would you care to explain that surgeon chakra before you woke up? Oh he, well I didn't want to have to worry about my receves being depleted like that again, so I made them large and increased the flow of chakra from my seal into my reserves. The boy scratched the back of his head. How? Well if you see inside my mind, I have a representation of the seal over an ocean of chakra, which is what's in the seal being purified and merged to mine. I just opened it up a bit more. The old man just shook his head, he was getting too old for this. Well then I will see you after you exams then. You have to prepare and I assume adjust to any unique skills you have acquired. The yeah, I have to test them out, but I won't be using them during the exams. Don't want anyone to know I can steal bloodlines now do we? He laughed though no one else did. They just sweat dropped as the old Naruto seemed to peek out of Ryu for a moment. Good night Ryu, get some rest, I am sure that these trials won't be that easy for you. With that both Nira and the Hokage left, but not before Nira placed a kiss atop Ryu's forehead. Next day, Sasuke, Ryu and Hinata all met up in front of the academy. The time spent training really cut down on then speaking to each other, they either knew or would just simply flash signs to each other. But today was something different. Are you guys ready? Ryu asked, since they really didn't know what they would need. Yay, you know we are Ryu-kun. It's not like we are Genin or anything, Hinata joked, which had taken them aback as it was one of the few times she had shown sarcasm. But seeing as how her and Sasuke were dating, it wasn't surprising that she would pick up on his sharp wit. Well then perhaps we should go in and just sit there Sasuke spoke, as motion for them all to enter. The work they way up the stairs and looked to each other, as they clearly could see through the Jinjutsu on the door, only to shake their heads and silently move up to the next level. Entering the real room 301, they noticed not many groups had made it, though Ryu noticed a team from Suna and noted they actually looked rather calm and slightly happy compared to yesterday. Team 7 was taking in the competition, noting that not many looked to be an issue in their book, but then they were well aware of the pretending to be something else than you were. A few more teams from Kanoha seemed to trickle in, until amazingly all of the rookies were there, all in total there were nearly 40 teams in the room. When a silver-haired kid came up to them, with a stack of cards in hand. Ryu turned to look at Sasuke, who had his back to the newcomer, to see if he had his henge over his eyes. Which were black so yes he had it on. I'm Kabuto, I thought you guys might want some help looking over the competition. Hibaran up, sure tell me about Sasuke Ichiha and Ryu Namikas, the dog boy barked out, causing two teams to look their way, both of which happened to be wearing Iowa headbands. You know their names. That makes it all too easy, he flicked a card and focused some chakra into it, before Sasuke Ichiha's record showed up, stating that he had completed 2340D rank missions, 8C rank and 1 rank mission. It also stated that he had activated his Dejutsu. Having heard that Sasuke and his very brooding like just went HN. Well as for Namek is here, he changed cards, it showed the same missions as Sasuke as they were teamed, but it also ranked his skills as being near nothing outside of medical jutsu. But Ryu slipping into the old dope mode, but your cards are stupid. Suddenly smoke filled the air leaving a man in a trench coat standing in the room, alright, come here take a number and find you seat. He waited, now. He barked focusing his killing intent on the gather genin to get them motivated. He waited for them all to take the random seats. Good, I'm Marino Ibiki, I will be your proctor for this stage of the exams. You will have an hour to complete this written test. If you are caught cheating, then you will lose 2 points, if your team collectively loses 10 points you fail the exam and are ejected. Also I will verbally give you the last question when 10 minutes remain for the exam. He looked at them all, begin. Ryu smirked to himself as he flipped over the test, reading over the questions. He didn't even have to bother cheating after he saw them. In this case it was much of what he and Sasuke had read over out of the combined secret Namikas et al library that they now owned. As well as Hinata could easily copy others, since she was wearing a henge of herself to disguise the Byakugan that she had activated before they walked into the school. Ryu took his time answering them all in depth and even giving pointers. Ryu also wrote a note to Ibiki on it, stating that the info cards that Kabuto had were beyond the level of skill for a genin, as well as garnering the information on them. Plus the Iwa teams were aware of him being a Namikas. After that he just waited, listing to teams getting ejected and shot out of the room. The time slipped by slowly until, all right now, half of you are gone, and I don't expect many of you to even be able to handle the last question. The man paused to glare at the remaining teams. Now, there's a stipulation to this question. You can decide to not take it and leave, though if you take it and fail, then you will be barred from becoming Chunin permanently. There were murmurs around the room, and several more teams quit, leaving only 14 teams. Last chance. Everyone left just sat there, alright you guys all passed. Just as some of them started to cry out in indignation the window exploded inward and a banner appeared stuck to the ceiling with a nearly named Anko standing in front of it. Alright maggots, I'm Midrashi Anko. 
I'll be the proctor for your second exam, get your asses down to training ground 44, move it. Several of the team scrambled out the door, and yes she was hot but damn scary. 42 runs, not bad a bicky, maybe I'll just have to cut them in half. She smirked at team 7 this was going to be fun, but so bad. The teams filtered out of the room, but not before Ryu caught the look on Anko's face. The internal shudder that passed from him to his own teammates caused them all to look at each other and chuckle. Come on Atoto, Nichan we should start planning on what to do next. His faded strawberry blonde hair bounced over his headband and he nodded to them. I Ryu kun Hinata blushed as she felt Sasuke's hand wrap around her waist. Team 7 left the room only Ibiki and Anko remained. So. What do you think of the brats? The violent wheel it spoke up looking at the man that was her boss. His hands shifted through the stacks of papers pulling seven of them to the side. These actually passed the test. He looked them over, all of team seven. Ryu above and beyond. Seems he noticed something we forgot about. He ran a grizzled hand over his jaw. And what did we forget? Iwa. They know he's a Namikaze and seems that one of our own is skilled beyond what we thought. He passed her Ryu's test and let her read over his notes. She smirked, seeing answers that made her proud to have had a hand in his training. Though her frown marred a few other things she read. Down in level reserves and control. Knowledge beyond expected or allowable training. She worried on her lower lip. Seven attempts at the exams. That should never have happened or been allowed. I know, the fact that kid spotted this and we haven't even noticed in all these years. I want him on our team. The hint of fanatic fanboy waves collided into Anko. Aki would be a good addition, but he would say no. She laughed, unless you figured a way to let him still do what he wants. She looked over her shoulder as she set the test back down, Jana. She vanished in a cloud of smoke. Training ground 44, alright you brats, pay attention. Her voice carried over the din of Jenin voices. This is no as the forest of death. Her smirk echoed in her words. You will all sign the waivers being passed to you or forfeit your chances. Why? In case you die our village won't be held accountable. She laughed, since you will be in here for a while. Since you have to get two scrolls. She smiled though it wasn't a pleasant one. Everyone will be given a scroll, and there are only two types. You must have one of each and arrive with your whole team at the tower in the center of the forest in five days. She walked past them all slipping a small note to Ryu. Turn in your waivers at the tent, collect your scroll and report to your starting gate. Inside the forest, Team 7 lumped from tree to tree with a deft precision, well precision for a group of overly trained teenagers that extended themselves beyond the limits of rationale. Clone teams. Hinata fingered to the boys who both nodded. The three of them created five clones and sent them off in teams after handing them each a summon tag. They had no intentions of fighting unless they had to. After all this was their training ground for quite a while they knew most of the good places to camp or hide. The one they decided on however was the tower. It wasn't a fair choice, but given what they were attempting to do it was the most deceptive method. Go to the tower, camp and wait for teams to come out tired and beaten. Take their scroll, unless one of their clones manages to get a hold of the one they need and dispels after tagging it. Then they would just summon the stolen scroll and go in. So we rigged the entrance with traps and try to be the only team that gets in. Sasuke smirked. A thwop to the back of his head from Hinata turning that smirk into a frown. No, we just set up traps to annoy them in case we have to steal a scroll from them here. Ryu just looked between them with a small smile. His own thoughts a mixture of the two. Yet a small pang of not having that dot sure, he saw Sasuke as his brother and Hinata as a sister, but his own childish thoughts wanted to have that special feeling too. Yet in the back of his mind other things were stirring, feelings and senses were picking up something was coming. Something that stirred the words challenge and danger respectively in his thoughts. That's it for today guys, I will stop here. I hope you all enjoyed this video if you do please leave a like share and subscribe. Also don't forget to check it out author of this story too. I will see you in the next video. Until then you can try our other's videos too. So thanks for watching.